The AGDQ 2016 livestream is powered by Twitch. Twitch is one of the world's leading social video game platform and commuters for, uh, community for gamers. Welcome back to AGDQ 2016. I'm Edo Bean, and I will be hosting for this block of Paper Mario for All Cards by GigaDB. <laughs> the hype is real here. <laughs> Just a reminder that we're still trying to get that uh, bid incentive for Diablo 2. If you want the secret cow level, we need 12,500, and right now we're only at 10,293. So if you want that secret cow level, go ahead and donate. Moo. We have a $35 donation from Kamar 3524 Love the runs, love the people, love the event. Everything goes towards one of my new favorite games, Diablo. Keep it up, everyone. And although I haven't been affected by cancer firsthand, I know many that have and the struggle that brings with it. We're all in this together, and let's bring an end to it. Thank you, Zero75, for your $10 donation. What you all do is amazing and inspiring. Keep up the incredible runs. Save the animals. Anonymous112 donates $50. I love what you guys do and try to donate when I can. Keep it up and kill the animals. AltF4 to win donates $5. Hey, Greenerling, good luck on the run. Shoutouts to Brad on the couch. Did you know you can warp to the credits if you press B on the Jeep?
Also, just a reminder, during the Paper Mario All Cards, we do have a prize specifically for this run. If you donate $10 during the Paper Mario run, you will get your chance to win a Paper Mario game as well as Mario cards. All contributed by E underscore Mr. So once again, if you want to win those prizes, which is Paper Mario, the actual game, and Mario cards, all you have to do is donate $10 during this run if you want your chance to get that prize. Hi. Hello. <laughs> All right. Three, two, one, go. Yeah. Hi everyone, I'm GigaDB and this is my Let's Play of Paper Mario, all cards. <laughs> so, should we do a real call wrestling? Uh, sure. So, uh, I am Base DLX, uh, right behind me. I am Headstrong1290. And I'm N1. And we got the meme squad in the back. <laughs> Alright, so... The first thing to mention about this game, which is really nice, is that the text all scrolls if you just held B, so I don't have to do any text mashing, so that's really nice. Yeah, other games in the series, you actually have to mash text, so it's kind of odd, like TTYD, for example, you have to mash text, but this game, you made it, made it so you could just hold B. Don't know why they changed that, but hey, works for us, for speedy <laughs> purposes. Alright, so this game is like a turn-based RPG speedrun. It's kind of unique because of the movement, which you'll see right here. It's all spin dash based, which is very unique. Yeah, other games in the series don't actually have a spin, a button to just spin around. So most of the movement in this game, Giga is just basically going to be tapping the L button in his GameCube controller to spin, and then pressing A to jump out of his spin at just the right time, because if he completes his spin, there will be this animation that plays for about a half second where it will basically just be stopping. So much of the movement is just spinning and jumping out of your spin, or using other objects in the surroundings, like stairs, for example, as you just saw, to cancel the spins. And there's a lot of interesting optimization you can do with that, actually. Yeah, as you saw, even in that little movement I did, um, if you spin into stairs, it auto cancels your spin, so you can just start a new one immediately. 
And uh, this is definitely the most exciting part of the run, prologue. Um, we do uh, we do some spins. We uh, go through text, and there's lovely cutscenes. Like, what more do you want? Can we get some hype in the chat for prologue, boys? <laughs> Woo, prologue! <Yeah>. Woo! <laughs> that prologue. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So here we have our uh, first fight in the game, Bowser. I have no idea who this guy is. He never shows up in any Mario games. Yeah, never heard of him. So all you have to do is mash A, but there actually is a minor optimization strat here. Um, right when Mario goes to jump, if you press A, it cancels his jump, his like squatting animation there. So that's why I have to mash A until he actually lifts off the ground. It's very minor, but throughout the run, it actually saves, um, like, sec it comes up to seconds. Yeah, you can, sh you can show them real quick, actually, what a jump looks like. We, we, we call this mechanic just quick jumping. So basically, like, Mario will have this rather lengthy crouching animation that he goes through every time he jumps. And pr for whatever reason, even though we have no action mans whatsoever, if we just press A right now, as soon as he crouches, it'll cancel it. Well, I'm not, gonna, I'm not going to show what a, real, a regular jump looks like, because I want to go fast. Ding. Oh, well. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> Also, fun fact about this fight, if you somehow cheat and are able to hurt him, your game will actually crash. So this fight is so scripted. Oh wait, I died! Oh! <laughs> Runs over. Mario losing to Bowser, what game is this? Alright, this next part is like just a really long cutscene, so if there are any donations, you can read some. No problem, we got a $10 donation from Willem. Awesome to see Giga at AGDQ. Putting my $10 on the Luigi skip. Yes, I agree. Geister Carl donates $10, standing up in the morning and getting Paper Mario. Sweet, but beware of paper cuts. <laughs> Got an anonymous $10 donation. Had to donate during my favorite game. Good luck, Giga. Also, bring Luigi to the party. He works hard. Sometimes. Not in this game. He's a scared cat. We have a $6.40 uh, donation from Ross S. Paper Mario was my introduction to turn-based RPGs, and it made me fall in love with them. You're all so talented and fun to watch. Thanks for all you do and for the greater good. Zeta Gundam ZZ donates $25. Second time donating here. Had to put in a donation in honor of one of my favorite all-time games, which is Paper Mario. Keep the donations up, people. Please let the awesome announcer put my donation towards their choice. Thank you. <laughs> Laddie, do Laddie donates $30. I have to donate for my favorite game, Paper Mario. It's so good. Love to see it run. Thanks for everything. AGDQ is great, as always. Soul Commodore donates $10. Cannot wait to see this Paper Mario run. I'm always impressed by what you guys do in terms of these amazing runs, hosting the event, and the incredible cause this money is going to. Thanks for everything you guys do, and thanks to everyone who donated as well. I couldn't do much, but here's a little to help. Oh, and bring Luigi to the party. Hasn't he suffered enough? He doesn't do anything in this game. <laughs> He's a lazy bum. No, he doesn't. <laughs> All right, so we're coming very shortly to some actual movement again. Um, it's very exciting. Um, actually, we haven't even really talked about what all cards is, have we? No, we haven't. Well, all cards is you get all the cards. It's pretty easy, right? But uh, in actuality, it's the Star Spirit cards at the end of every chapter, so it's kind of like all chapters in a sense. The any percent category for uh, this game is actually a bit shorter, and you actually don't have to get any cards in any percent. So this is to show some of the chapters that you normally would skip. You get to do some cool stuff in the other chapters. Yeah, this game has really evolved a lot kind of over the years. Like back like before 2012, for example, there weren't really too many. I, I guess I'm kind of spoiling it a bit already, but there weren't really too many any amazing sequence breaks at all with this game. But then past that, 
this game just suddenly got really broken. But even compared to that time, for example, when the average all cards, I guess, PV was in like the 340 range, for example, today we, I can probably say that we have, for those who don't know, we're living under a rock, but in this category, we have actually managed to get an all cards time under three hours in the year yeah. 2015. Yeah. So it's, it's pretty nice. Except we're in 2016 now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, I can try to get a little spin cancel off there. It saves frames. Yeah, it's a pretty precise yeah. angle. You have to hold on your controller to actually get that. And the angles on your analog stick, since he's using a GameCube controller in particular, do vary slightly every time he turns the console on and off. Yeah. So it's a bit, it's a bit muscle memory based, but it's also just kind of something yeah. you gotta get a for. It only saves like a few frames anyway, so it's not even a big deal. It's kind of cool though. But those those frames are very precious. Yeah. So. So we're coming to one of the best parts of Prologue, getting coins from bushes. Um, if you're familiar with Super Mario 64 coins, it's kind of like that, where the coins just have a mind of their own, and they go wherever they want. So I have to react to them. And we got the hammer. Oh boy. All right, so anyway, Giga is getting all these coins because he needs to save them up to buy a badge later on in the game, a bit after chapter one to be precise. and. It's going to be very vital that he not only pays attention to his coin count, like he doesn't want to miss any coins, he also needs to be very careful to avoid as many encounters as possible. Because if you get into an encounter, there's a good chance that you'll lose coins, you'll have to pick them up. Yeah. Um, this coin route that I'm doing actually, uh, there are some backup coins I can get, but like, um, it's very slow. But I'm confident enough that I re don't really need too many backup coins. So anyway, this fight, it's just like the fight in the opening cutscene. We don't have extra commands yet, so a lot of the fights, it's just going to be mashing A to do the quick jumps. You can actually skip this fight through some crazy glitching, but it's not really RTA viable. So we'll yeah. just do this fight. And also, actually even more important is the experience here from this fight, because 20 experience is a lot. And um, routing when you level up is very important to and what stats you get. Yeah, you'll understand a bit more why later, but basically managing and controlling the experience you get is a very important aspect of having this game. And so we don't want to get any more or any less experience than we absolutely need to actually complete the route. Alright, so he's got that Fire Flower, because a lot of the items in this game, particularly early on, are going to be very useful, since there's going to be several required fights in the early parts of the game where we're... We're at the low level, so we don't really have many good attacks for hitting multiple enemies at once. So Fire Flower is one such item that'll be very useful for that purpose. All right, now we get the absolute best partner in the game, Goombario. And if you disagree, you're wrong, sorry. You can actually skip Goombario, but it's slower, so. <laughs> Because partnered with uh, Gumbario, you get power jump, which is actually really important to the run. Also, this tutorial, so there's actually three tutorials in the game, most of them in the very beginning. And if you do happen to press A there and say yes, uh, you'll end up losing quite a bit of time. This particular tutorial, it's just to teach you how to use the badge menu. It's not very long, but there are two other tutorials later that are much longer and generally a reset if you by any chance, not press B. So yeah, that's another nice thing. Like, I, like just like I can hold B to uh, mash through text instantly, you can also just hit B to say no in menus instantly. So it's kind of convenient and very intuitive, right? So now I'll have actual, like, some hard enemies to dodge. And those first Goombas can sometimes be a really pain in the butt, especially when you're learning. Yeah, this pathway that he's walking on is very narrow, so if you just blindly try to spin and get past them, chances are you're just going to get into an encounter. And also, since he's at the beginning with no action commands at all, if you try to run away, it's purely luck whether you do. So getting an encounter in Prologue is extremely, extremely bad. So again, um, any jump attack that Mario can do can be um, cancelled slightly with quick jumping, but and um, any of Goombario's attacks, like Headbond, cannot. So jumping is the only thing that has like that property.
Yeah, so we're in peril right now because we didn't even bother healing after the Junior Trooper yeah. fight, but thankfully we have this Fire Flower, which does three, three damage, which is actually a lot for this time in the game. Oh, and um, thankfully enough, there's no like critical hit mechanic in this game, because if there was, if everything would be so much more scarier. <laughs> so you always know, like most fights are really consistent. That being said, once we get a certain badge, there is going to be a lot of RNG added to the fights. Yeah. Kind of akin to, well, not quite like a critical hit, but sort of, you know, you think of like a damage rolls. Kind yeah. of like that. But I mean, it's like, it's nothing like you could like lose the run immediately. It's just like small time yeah, here and there for the most part. We'll explain it a bit later. Yeah. Oh, you know what? We haven't talked about... One important thing we haven't talked about yet is the version of the game that he is running on. So oh, yeah. he is playing on the N64 version, which for a very long time in our community, we assumed to be the slowest version because loading times are slower than on the Wii Virtual Console, which is the other major version that people would play on. But the Wii Virtual Console version has tons of lag in certain places. And recently we discovered, without any shred of doubt whatsoever that it's faster for any percent and also a bit not as dramatic but also a bit faster for all cards and we'll explain yeah. like throughout the game where like i guess where vc really lags a lot yeah i actually um i've been running this game for about two years now and i spent one and a half years on vc um which is part of the reason why i'm actually playing on a gamecube controller with an adapter um because i learned the whole game on gamecube controller and i just couldn't give it up but i wanted to play on 64. Anyway, so this fight, uh, so yeah, we just power jump him and then just use head bunk him, but also note, he attacked the tree. Yeah. We were actually having a discussion in our room, like, a bit before this run, how we thought Goomba King was actually one of the best, well, in N1's opinion, that <laughs> Goomba King was one of the best fights in the game because it's the only one where, like, there's a target you can hit beside the boss and added this interesting mechanic. Yeah. I know, like, most people don't even know that you can't hit that tree, like, casually. So you have this little awesome cutscene where Gumba King goes flying off into the distance. Just wait, the cutscene that's <laughs> next is even more awesome if you've never yeah. played this game before. So. This castle like lags up very hard on N64 and in Wii VC. There actually is um, a Wii U virtual console, which is like the best version to run on. But because Japanese Wii U VC is so like is a bit harder to access, no one really does runs on it. But in, in that version, there's like no lag anywhere, which is very nice. Yeah, it's really easy to region unlock your uh, Wii. So getting the Japanese version is not too difficult if you want to play on Wii VC, so that's also one reason why it was really popular. It's very accessible. Mm -hmm. And also, um, we can't really use English. We didn't even really mention that Japanese, um, there's less characters, so the, the text scrolls in this game, so it's much faster to play on the Japanese version. There's also a few Japanese exclusive glitches which will be used in this run, but there's not really that many. Okay. This seems pretty great. Yeah. I'm sure, you, I'm sure everyone out there can read what's happening, right? So I'm just going to say, in the English version, what Bowser's actually saying is like, oh, oh, like that. Take your little thing. It's kind of, 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 it's kind of awkward, but that's actually what he says to the best of my memory. So again, um, spinning off ledges is good too because it also cancels the spin. So we finally get to Toad Town. Um, actually, Kinoko we need town. to get Kinoko Town. Yeah, if we uh, if we could get action commands at the start of the game, we could actually skip four minutes of prologue. But we because you get it at the end, we can't do that. And we're gonna be shopping right now for later in the, in the run. Well, mainly not that much later, just chapter one. Yeah, this is a rather recent addition to that. For a very long time, we wouldn't use. We wouldn't really use the item shop in Prologue, but just now he bought a Fire Flower and a Fright Jar. And later on, there's an, there's another item shop we'd go to a bit later, but we're going to skip that by buying those items there. Yeah. Small optimization, that's nice to mention.
So again, we get to do more spin canceling. It's pretty great. Yeah, as you get up, as notice as he gets up, this like not too much jumping is even needed really. Like just spin cancels most of the spins. Watch. We have a ten dollar donation from Pi. Not only is AGDQ running over my birthday, but it's one of my favorite games is getting run. Paper Mario hype. With likes like these, uh, it only feels fitting that I should give something back. Best of luck to the runner, and let's get that cow level. <laughs> Got a $10 donation from Hululi WS. Uh, I love Paper Mario, and I can't wait to see this run of all cards. This donation will go to Runner's Choice. I haven't even really decided a Runner's Choice, have I? Probably should. <laughs> <laughs> um... Hmm. You know, let's go uh, OT file name daddy. Let's go with that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, here comes my favorite part. <laughs> the boy Twink. Yeah. Oh my god, he's Twink! <laughs> Probably what he'd sound like if he had mm -hmm. a voice. Yeah, you can read some more donations here, or do twink voices, whatever you want. <laughs> 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 That's how I always have him sound like. We got a fifty dollar donation from Kyle Jurek. Paper Mario is one of my all time favorite games, and I'm so glad to see it here at AGDQ. I'm so bitter about Super Paper Mario not being the real Paper Mario game. So hopefully this run will help me heal. Kill the run. <laughs> Frame the animals. Shots fired. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> we have a, a hundred dollar donation from I Ate Your Pie. Oh man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey Paper Mario crew, I Ate Your Pie here. Just wishing you all the best of luck in this marathon. Glad to see Paper Mario got another chance and I know Giga DB will blow this out of the water. I am also issuing a challenge of sorts to the PM crew. <laughs> if anyone on the couch can sing the whole Old Man River song oh during God. the Peach Cut scene, I'll <laughs> donate another $100. Which Peach Cut scene? We don't do the cake anymore, so I don't know. Um, Probably the Chapter 6 one. Chapter 6? It's pretty long. <laughs> okay, we'll do it during Chapter 6. <laughs> All right, so that, that'll, be, that'll be some fun. All right, so anyway, this is the first fight he has action commands, and this is all... This, it's a minor little note, but this is also the first fight in the game where he has to time his quick jumps. So yeah. I mentioned earlier, he just mashes the buttons in Paul because he doesn't have action commands, but now he has to actually time it the moment he starts crouching. Yeah, so I actually, yeah. I tap A when Mario's right, right about to leave the ground, and then I have to hit the action command as well. All right, so... All right, so yeah. up, until this, up until this point, this game has basically been a glitchless run, but that's all about to change really soon, so... Yeah. Giga is about to do a trick that basically say, or I just said basically, but <laughs> yeah, it gives a tr it gives th that save, no, that saves about a minute or so off of a glitchless run. We call it Black Toad Skip because normally there's a cutscene that you have to do in Merlin's house that's really long, and so yeah, he's going to use out of bounds mechanics in this game to get around the Koopa Bros who are disguised as Black Toads blocking the road. Just so you know, out of bounds mechanics makes no sense. I'll try to explain it as best as I can after it's over, but yeah. So first he's going to do what's called Toe Clip. So he has to spin in between the toe when he's at a wall, like that. And if he times his hammer just uh, right, uh, if he times his hammer press just right, he will wedge himself in between, like, in between that boundary, and that lets him fall out of bounds. And if he maneuvers himself <sighs> just the right way, he'll land like at the corner of the post office. This toad also has to cooperate, which he's not. Yeah, it's our, it's it's totally random whether or not he decides to stay still. If he doesn't stay, <laughs> if he doesn't, if he doesn't stay still, it's basically a. Ah, I did it again. It's it's a frame. It's a frame perfect. It's it's a frame perfect input to get it if he doesn't stay still. So it's really difficult. So that's. All right, this should work. Yeah. All right. Uh, uh, wait, no, I, I can still do it. Yeah, I'm we're fine. It. Yeah. A bit awkward, but we got All right. it. <laughs> so anyway, a couple other notes about that trick. So I'm going to try and explain out of bounds mechanics again to the best of my ability. So the idea is when you get out of bounds like that, you notice that he basically he fell into the <laughs> he fell into he fell into the void. 
kind of. So Mario disappeared off the screen for just a brief moment. So the moment that he disappears off of the screen, the game checks whether there's solid ground above you or not. And if there is, Mario will respawn where that solid ground was. But if there isn't, then Mario respawns where you initially fell from. And the idea is he wanted to maneuver himself while he was falling, so he spawned right above the Toad House like that so he could get around them. I hope that was a good enough explanation, because you're going to see a lot more of that <laughs> yeah. in the rest of the run. I just right. want to say, um, it says no comment, but the person by the name of Bury Me in Smoke donated $1,000. Wow. So. Sorry, there's no comment on it, but thank you. Thank you for that donation. All right, so the reason I saved is actually kind of sad, but this mini game is actually really hard for me. Sorry. It's yeah. This mini game, it, this mini game, it's kind. It's not really that difficult, but you'll you'll see in a moment. The fuzzies are just gonna be bouncing across the trees, yeah. and you have to figure out which one has the shell. Well, so, yeah, only the last round is actually hard, but it wastes so much time to fail it that I have to save there, and it can screw up the route and stuff. Yeah, if he fails it. There's about a 10% chance that'll get a coin, which is fine, just waste a little bit of time, but about 90%, on the other hand, he'll have to fight a fuzzy. And as we mentioned earlier, we don't want to waste time fighting enemies you don't need to, as well as get unnecessary experience. We can't run away from this fight, so yeah. Okay, let's focus. All right, that was easy. Yeah. So All right, we, we're good. We're good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah the, ma the main dif <laughs> the main the main difficulty in that mini game is, it, you notice that last that last one it's going really fast. So if they bounce back and forth between trees, some people have a lot of trouble seeing the blur. I know Giga does, and I certainly do. Some people are better at it, but a lot of people have trouble with it. Just worth mentioning. All right, so now we got Cooper. Um, he has some use early game, but uh, other than that, he's kind of annoying because he doesn't like to be, be used. You'll see why later, maybe. So these fuzzies have exactly three HP, so this fight is the main reason we picked up that first fire flower. Yeah. I'm not too much is going on. I was thinking this would be a good time to read donations. Yeah. No problem. I got a $25 donation from Anonymous. I absolutely love Paper Mario. You know what I love even more? Amazing announcers. You know what I love even, even more? Crowds hyped for Paper Mario. <laughs> you guys are a great crowd. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Cyberbot X donates ten dollars. Good luck with the Paper Mario Giga DB. Now let's get that glitched Pokemon in. Vince Brothers uh, donates twenty dollars. Big fan of the Paper Mario games, especially as speed games. Good luck on the run, Giga, uh -huh. and may the RNG gods be on your side. This paratrooper coming up can be kind of annoying. Let's see how it goes. Oh, God. ooh, that was sketchy. That was a really weird position. Okay. Shadubi donates $20. Paper Mario is one of my favorite game series ever, and I've been super excited to see its run since the start of the event. Money goes to runner's choice, except don't kill the animals. All right, so again, Giga safety saving, because as I want to really, really stress, there are a lot of points in this run where things can just really go wrong, and you can lose several minutes. So if you do not save, it could very well, it could very well spell absolute doom. Yeah. I guess that would be a way to put it. So you really, in a marathon run like this, it's really important to safety save whenever you can, even if it seems trivial. Because there's, if you watch Paper Mario streams, like lots of things, anything can happen. That block may or may not save one frame. I still don't know. Also, that fight, 
is one of the first instances where he used an untimed, ac untimed action command. So sometimes we don't won't need to do the full amount of damage to kill a certain enemy. So it's just faster to not time the action command. Save the frames, you know. And you also notice I upgraded the FP, and the early part of the run FP is very, very useful because, like, you don't really have that many good badges, um, but you really you have um, some decent attacks. But that they cost a lot of FP though, so we definitely need that first. You can just like walk behind here. I don't even know if that's a clip or anything, but you can just do that. I did that casually actually. I don't even know. If yeah, yes, you have to, for some reason, you just have to tug on the analog stick a bit before you get in. It doesn't really make sense. And coming up now is more out of bounds stuff. Right. This makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Now I'm at the top. Yeah. The loading zone behind that door is solid ground. And thankfully, there's, there's an area between that staircase and the railing that he could wedge himself between and fall directly to the basement, like he just did. And even though I went in the top, well, the first time you enter this room, it makes you come out the bottom, but the game doesn't like that, so it just leaves these doors open for whatever reason. <laughs> so yeah, we're, if, in case you didn't know, we're actually doing things out of order. What? What? I fell through the trap! <laughs> oh my god. What a dunce. So bad. What a dunce. <laughs> Rip. It's weird. It's almost like I fall for it every run, too. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, the whole point of Giga doing that trick is to get, is to, one, we want to get Bombette early in the run. Normally, you have to actually get another key first before we could enter that room. But since we entered it from the top, we bypassed that. Also, we, there's that Koopa below the staircase that you normally have to fight. To, that would release a switch that lowers the stairs. and. What this does is lets us get to the basement without lowering the stairs at all. Yeah, and having Bombette for the pit room is kind of nice. You can speed up them up a little bit. Or the fights in the room, that rather. You, you can actually soft lock your game if you hold up while, while you're waiting for Bombette to talk, and it's really dumb, so thankfully it didn't happen. <laughs> Alright, so major RNG time. This is the first fight. He's going to have to use a Fright Jar, so let's hope it works. Oh, oh that's, that's that is hor that's horrible. Wow. Gotta love that marathon look. Very, very bad. So now, because he had to use Bomb there, he's going to be short on FP, so later on he's going to have to hit Art Block, and that's going to waste quite a bit of time. Also, um, some people don't realize this, but uh, the coins out of that fight are always the same. I always get the same amount. Also notice with that in that room just now, the stairs are lowered. So this is kind of a perfect example on how the game works based on triggers. So by getting Bombette, or by getting Bombette early, like like he just did, he made the game more or less think that, oh, he got Bombette, so all these other things have to be a certain way for that to be logical. So since you normally had to lower those stairs before you got Bombette, the stairs just automatically get lowered after you get her, even though you didn't actually lower them. All right, we have to use one more Fright Jar for the entire run, so please, please, just work. Yay, oh. it works! It's a 10% chance of failing on each individual enemy. Sometimes, though, it doesn't seem like it, but that's, right. you know, just classic RNG. And I set up for striking that guy with Bombay because it's pretty fast. I just jump over him and get far away for enough, and it always works. And again, untimed action command here. Yep. Actually, recently, like, for a long time, we just, like, mashed A and Bombit, like, flew all the way across to the Koopa, but it actually seems like it saves some time to, like, do it halfway so Bombit, like, walks closer. So, one thing a lot of people also don't know is that these fire bars actually have coins in them. Yeah, he has to jump over them ten times exactly, and when he does, it'll it'll release, I believe, ten coins. Yeah, ten coins. I believe. Ten coins. Oh, I, yeah, I said that last time. Yeah, ten coins. Wow. So we used to jump over that other fire bar as well, but thankfully, with the changes in the route that we made, including buying stuff at the item shop, we don't really need to do that anymore. Oh. 
So we had to blow up that wall there, and that guy's in the way. So he had to go. So Gay had to go out of his way and lure that Koopa out before he placed Bombat down, because there's quite a bit of time before Bombat blows up. And if he stays too close to the jail cell, he'll notice you. Bombat will blow up on him. Most likely, he'll get an encounter. It's really annoying. All right, hyper trick coming up. Yeah. Although well, before that, um, I'm going to do a little minor optimization that you'll see that I'll do throughout the run. I just want to mention it now. Um, while I'm unlocking doors, I, w I can do actions, so I don't have to wait. So I, here I can switch partners. And coming up now is the best trick of the run, Pie Jump. And I'm going to have to shout out my boy, I at Your Pie, the legend, the, sh the, sh the streamer of bigness. All right, here we go. Pretty right, good. Double or nothing. Yeah. All right. So fun fact: we don't cons we don't cons we do not the community does not cons unanimously does not consider pie jump to be a glitch. So in glitchless, you would also do pie jump. Yeah. And that second one actually doesn't save that much. And if you by any chance fail that, you usually lose about a minute of your time. And yeah. pie used to, pie would used to call that the walk of shame if yeah. you had because you had to backtrack all the way up that long like hallway. So it's, it's one of the most frustrating moments for many runners is just being in this loop of resetting in, like, in the chapter one area because they miss pie jump. It's not, it's not a difficult trick, but you have to be gentle with your controller or you'll fall off. Yeah. I was actually really, I thought for sure I was going to fall on the first one. Thank God I didn't. All right, so last kind of challenging part of chapter one coming up. We're gonna enter a room where a bunch of bullet bills are gonna be fired at us constantly, and we have to get to the other side and jump over them. And this is probably the worst place in chapter one to get a single encounter, because if you get an encounter here and you lose your coins, they'll spread around, and you have to pick up your coins while dodging all these other bullet bills. So let's focus. All right, I have TLFP, I remember. Yeah. All right, good. Good cannons. Yep. Nice thing is when he does the bomb action command outside of battle, it doesn't cost FP, and he gets the full amount of damage. Makes this fight a lot faster because these these bullet bill blasters have a lot of armor or a lot of defense. Alright, so while those coins are spawning, I refill my FP again, because I need all of it. I don't know. And right. he should have 50 coins now, which is exactly what he needs to buy the next badge. Alright. We'll never ask who the first boss of the game is. Are you guys excited? First chapter boss. Yeah, first chapter, well sorry, first chapter boss. <laughs> yeah. And OMG, it's Bowser! <laughs> oh my god, he's scary. That means we're already done with the game? Wow. Yeah, that was, that was, that was quick. pretty fast. This is a speedrun after all. I mean, that's a lot of damage, yeah. dang. For the record, it is actually faster not to block that. There's a couple of attacks in the game that, for whatever reason, not blocking versus blocking makes a difference. Very, very small difference, but you do notice it nonetheless. So even though these guys are pretty cool and they have good music, this fight is actually extremely fast. Um, uh, the items make this fight really fast. Yeah, this is also the last chapter boss fight in the game that has no RNG in it whatsoever. So, enjoy it now while you can, because <laughs> major RNG, well, by this well, game standards, will come up. So yeah, you just power block them, they can't get up, fire all of them while they're down, and they're all dead. Rip. They're all just regular Koopas anyway, so yeah. it's nice, just use power block, fire flower, boom. <laughs> I know, right? That was so hard. I had to use items. This guy's a cheater. Doesn't what a cheater. 
All right, so that was actually, even though prologue didn't go as planned, chapter one actually was really good, and so many things can go wrong there, so that was, that was really great. Uh, Jesse, you know, Azrael donated $1,000. Wow. Yeah, another $1,000, guys. This one does have a comment. You always seem to beat up your enemies, Giga. Do you even <laughs> lift, bro? Get <laughs> Luigi in timeout for being lazy. No party for you, sir. I agree. 100%. Yeah. Do you know what you're doing to those precious frames that are lost when you bring Luigi to the party? Like, no one wants to do that. We have an anonymous $200 <laughs> donation. <laughs> Luigi is adorable. Eh. <laughs> we have a $10 donation from the Sound Defense. I love watching Paper Mario, and Giga DB is already doing an excellent job with the commentary. Settling in for a nice long run. Got another $25 donation from Anonymous. Paper Mario was one of my childhood games, and I can't wait to see how it's broken. In honor of that, this one is for Runner's Choice. Lunar Flowers donates $10. Love Paper Mario. So glad to see this run. $50 from Anonymous. Shut up and take my paper, Mario. I just want to say that everyone involved with this event is amazing, and I truly believe that together we can finally get rid of cancer. Our guy's really hard, really hard, serious time right now. Yeah. One really difficult thing he must absolutely do at all costs right now. All right, All right, I said no. I did it. Ooh, okay. That was close. Oh. Really close, man. <laughs> that is the last tutorial uh, yeah. skip in the game, though. Now that tutorial actually wastes a minute and a half. It's so long. All right, so we're just going to be spinning back to Toad Town, so you can, I guess you can read a little bit more donations. Uh, got a $50 donation from D. Dungan. Uh, AGDQ is one of my favorite events of the year, and seeing one of my all-time favorite games being broken is such a treat. Good luck on the run, Giga. $10 from Klinoic. Uh, Paper Mario was the first game I completed in my life. Here's the great runners, great audience, and great announcers, and backstage workers. Keep breaking games, and keep breaking cancer. Got an anonymous $50 donation. I love seeing speedruns of Paper Mario, but I love giving to the Prevent Cancer Foundation even more. Keep up the good work, everyone at AGDQ. All right, Giga picked up a honey syrup. He's actually going to need that item. In a, he's going to need that item pretty soon, actually, depending on RNG, but we'll get to that. Yeah. Just pointing that out. There are a lot of uh, branch points in this route where it's depending on how some things go, I can pick up less and whatnot and have some faster fights because of having extra items. Alright, so this is our homeboy JR Mark II. <laughs> Mark he's, a really, he's a really hard boss. Really difficult. Yeah, I mean, mashing A is pretty hard. This is like one of the only times we actually need to use hammer, so I hope you like that hammer. Kicked his butt good, didn't we? <laughs> yeah. Alright, so coming up now is one of the most interesting points of the run. Uh, I can lose a lot of time or everything will just go smoothly. Um, due to RNG, I need to pick up the speedy spin badge from the shop. And 
It's 75%, but sometimes it really doesn't feel like that. Yeah, it's one of those things we kind of ask ourselves. Why would the developers intentionally say, you know what? We can make there be four badges and we... For badges oh, yeah, it's there. Us. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> one try. First try. But yeah, like it's something we wonder about. Like, why would you... You only have three slots, but there could be four possible badges. Yes, we sometimes ask about this why. They would yeah, things. all the other chapters, when you complete them, it adds three badges. But chapter one's the only one that has four, so... And for the record as well, uh, some some so some people have some really nasty horror stories about speedy spin. If you don't get it, so if you don't get it first try, it's about 25 seconds loss. Yeah. So that's major. And every and every time you don't get it, you have to go two screens away to reset the bad shop, and you're not even guaranteed it'll be there the next time. So it can just go on and on if you're really unlucky. So yeah. the the record recorded on stream is seven by this guy right here. Yeah. I, I got seven tries for Speedy Spin in a run. It was pretty great. So we got this awesome train. Yeah. But anyway, Speedy Spin, very important badge, because it is, as you have probably already noticed, it makes our spins faster and longer. So it not only simplifies the movement somewhat, but also it just makes it much feel much more fluid and a pleasure to do, I guess. So... Pretty much up until this point, it's been a sort of a natural route, but after we complete Mount Rugged, things are going to get a little crazy. We'll get into that in a bit, but uh, we do have a pretty long movement section in Mount Rugged, because we have to, we need Paracarry. We actually will get all the partners, but uh, in any percent, you can beat the game skipping three partners. So, But any percent still gets Paracarry anyway. Yeah, Paracarry is not, o so he's not only really useful in battle, Shellshot is the fast, more or less the fastest attack in the game. It does a lot of damage, and outside of battle, Paracarry is arguably, well not, well, not really arguably, but the second most broken party member in the game. And we're going we're gonna to use him for a lot of skips coming up. Well, not that soon. <laughs> not that soon, but quite a few, though. We'll do a little optimization there and spin while Cooper's getting the letter for you. The nice thing about this this area in the game, Mount Rugged, all of the enemies spawn in the same position since, well, they're all clefts. Most other enemies in the game do not spawn in the same position. They are spawned randomly off the set radius. So this is one of the few areas in the game where you can more or less do the same movement and get consistent results in terms of the way. Yeah. At some points later on in the run, there's actually encounters that I can sometimes not avoid at all, which is kind of annoying. But... RNG. Alright, last letter is coming up real soon. So sometimes Cooper decides to do his own thing here. We'll see. Uh, he actually cooperated. Oh, nice. Comes out of nowhere. There's a glitch that can happen where if you call your partner from when they're far away, they'll sometimes just do nothing instead. And you'll actually just waste time. It's pretty aggravating. It's a small thing, but it's also aggravating. And now meets homeboy Wacka. Shouts to Shout out to NK. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've never met anyone so dedicated to a video game character. He has like 20 emotes of Wacka. Wacka's a pretty swell guy, honestly. I think he deserves it. Yeah, thankfully we're, we're pretty nice to Wacka. We only need to hit him twice. And in previous Paper Mario rounds, they actually killed Wacka, but we're, we're yeah. only going to hit him twice. We only take what we need. Yeah, it was a donation incentive. This year, we were feeling merciful. But yeah, whack a bumps are probably the best healing item that you can easily obtain in the game. So they're going to be very useful later throughout the run when we need to heal really fast. And we obviously don't want to use Toad houses either, because that's really slow. Alright, so... Even though we got Paracarry, he has to backtrack just to get the seed because he's going to need it later to enter Chapter 6. There is no way to enter Chapter 6 without all the seeds. And you might think, well, you might be thinking, well, normally if you do this run, it might make more sense to get that seed on the way back from Dry Dry Desert because that's where you'd be going in a normal run. But as you'll see, it actually makes perfect sense to get that right now. Yeah. Um, normally if I was doing 
a natural sort of route, I would be finishing chapter two now, but I'm actually going to save it for later. And we got Wacka Spoil again. Spoilers. <laughs> you spoil it. Yeah, I'm actually going to be saving chapter two for later in this route. All right, yes, hit that heart block because there is a boss coming up that he needs FP for. All right, so coming up soon is a pretty infamous trick that walls a lot of people when they try to run this game, and that is a blue house skip. Um, hope I will try to live up to the legendary I ate your pie who got it first try in his run, but no promises. I don't know if I'm as good as him. Yeah, so BHS is a frame perfect trick, and it is also nearly pixel perfect as well. So it's as he, as Giga just said, a very major barrier for a lot of newer runners. Once you just do it a bunch of times, though, it's really just a matter of muscle memory with the controller you have. But it's still, it's still a difficult trick. Not, not trying to take away from that. But there's going to be even crazier tricks than BHS later in this run. Ah, uh, rip. Dang. Uh, oh. There we go. Third track. I also picked up the key yeah. while I was there in the house. I couldn't. Um, there's a little setup you can do from the key to get to the pipe really easy. So unfortunately, I'm not as good as I eat your pie, but we'll have to settle uh, for second best, I guess. All right. So coming up, we're going to fight Blooper because we need to actually get him out of the way in order to enter the pipe in Chapter Five. That's the whole reason that we even did Blue House Skip right now. And it's also the first boss fight in the game where he's going to be using power bounces, which is. The biggest source of RNG in most of the fights. Yeah, so you can go ahead and explain power bounces. All right. So the idea behind power bounces that a lot of people don't really know about is that uh, there are actually caps on the number of bounces that you get, on, and that is what is actually randomized. So for example, so for example, what I what I mean by that is you can hit the action command for the power bounce, but the game will still send you back flying. It'll force you to stop your power bounces. And, you know, this is obviously, the developer's intention is obviously to prevent you from just getting a crazy number of power bounces and, you know, one-cycling all the bosses just from being really good at it. But why on earth they decided to make the actual cat random is something we don't know, and it's something that really aggravates us. Yeah, I actually got 11 cap and a 9 cap. Um, optimally, you at least want 20, 23 bounces. I did not get as many, but... So you can kill him in two turns or one and a half turns if you're really lucky, but I got a three turn yeah, fight. Yeah, three turns are pretty much right. You're always guaranteed a three turn fight, though, unless you miss power bounces, which, by the way, on that fight, once you get around five power bounces or so, I believe, uh, the timing window for each power bounce becomes a lot narrower. About, not about, exactly two frames. So some people have a lot of trouble timing power bounces on Blooper in particular. It doesn't it doesn't look hard, but it actually kind of is sometimes. Like even some more experienced players will occasionally just not focus and miss power bounces on them. You really you really have to pay attention and hit the A button like as soon as you're about to hit them. Oh yeah, we're kind of in chapter five now. That's that's a thing. We were just. A yeah, we're stopping by. We're not actually going to beat Chapter 5 round. Yeah, now. we're just going to go collect some things first, and then we're going to head out. Yeah, it's important things, all right. So, yeah, the Yoshis get lost, and you're supposed to save them, but uh, I know other games saved Yoshis. We're not saving any Yoshis, sorry. So, yeah, what we're actually really after is two things. One is we want to get sushi. We will need her to cross the dock that we saw a bit earlier after we beat Blooper. We're going to use that to get to Chapter 3 a bit earlier than intended. Yeah, so after, yeah, after this, we said, just said we're going to Chapter 3. I, need, I needed Sushi to be able to do that. And the reason why we're doing Chapter 3 is because there's an item that you get for Chapter 3 that is extremely useful. So we want to kind of rush that as much as we can. Also, uh, on the way to... Ch to Chapter 3, we need to get this badge Power Quake, and that's because there are a bunch of required fights inside the sewers before we can access the pipe, and Power Quake dramatically speeds up those fights. It's actually going to be really helpful in a lot of other fights later, too. It's one of the cooler things about this relatively new route. 
Yeah, something to note that um, is pretty interesting is that N64 is actually much faster pausing than VC. Um, every time you pause in the run, uh, N64 saves one second. Yeah, it's pretty jarring when you play on VC. One of the, yeah, it's one of the things you immediately notice when you play on Wii U or N64. And this is the, one of the main reasons I picked up this badge. Um, it's pretty much the best way to take care of these guys. Yeah, these guys have two defense, and also, unlike uh, the Koopas that we beat in Chapter 1, if you bonk them on the head once, they'll get back up in the next turn. So they're quite annoying to kill. And if they hit you with their dizzy attack, there's very little you can do. The block's really difficult. Yeah. And once you get dizzy, you're basically dead. A couple things to note while I'm doing this. Um, that first Koopa can drop FP, which, which um, would let me skip using that honey syrup, and I can save it for later instead. But uh, I unfortunately did not get that. And also, I'm letting the Koopas hit me on purpose, because this I need to get to 1 HP later on. Yeah, aside from uh, getting speed spin first try, I would classify a lot of the RNG as front subpar as rather subpar. Yeah. I'm also, um, I do need a little bit of more coins for later on in the run, but it's actually faster even if you don't need the coins here to collect them because all the coins on the screen lag the game, even on N64. Sometimes, though, these guys, not only can they drop FP, they can drop hearts, too, and we really do not want heart drops because yeah. there's a badge we're going to get later on the game that's going to greatly boost Mario's attack power when he's in peril. So, right now, we want to avoid heart drops if yeah. possible. One heart drop is fine, but any more than that will waste time. Yeah. Alright, I got none. That's good. Yeah. In a practice run today, you got, like, three from that fight. Yeah, it was it's pretty, pretty bad. It's pretty, it's pretty ridiculous. All right, so now we're heading off to Bo's mansion. We're gonna do some mini games to get Bo and stuff. Also, a lot of these Bo mini games, well, the mini games in Bo's mansion are there's a lot of itsy bitsy pieces of RNG throughout. So yeah. this this game, for example, uh, the boo in the center is gonna throw a record, and how long he waits until he throws the record, and as well as to which boo is random. So it can make several seconds worth of difference. Yeah. It usually varies between 2 and 10 seconds, so we'll see. Alright, that was that pretty was, fast. Yeah, it was pretty fast. But Dewey's gonna end far away from me. That's fine, though. Alright, you can, you can read a few more donations. We're just doing some more mini-games here. No problem. We got a $10 donation from Violi69. Howdy, AGDQ. Love Paper Mario. Both it and its sequels are my favorite of all Mario games. Fantastic to see it run so perfectly. Best of luck to everyone in their runs. Money goes to saving the animals. Because animals. Got a $25 donation from Nootsy. Uh, Paper Mario is tied for my favorite game, along with Paper Mario Thousand Year Door. Super glad to see this run being done. Good luck, Giga. If I'm ever picking up a speed game, seriously, you better believe it'll be Paper Mario. Oh, and kill the animals. <laughs> All of them. We got a $25 donation from Morris Liam. Super hyped to see an all-cards Paper Mario this year. My girlfriend is obsessed with this game and can't get enough of these speedruns. Screw Luigi. Let's save those animals and let's take them to the party instead. Mm. I don't know about that one. Some people are just too nice, man. Don't pity Luigi. He doesn't deserve it. He's killing all those frames. Like, we need them. We have a $25 donation from Supeku. A chance to win a Paper Mario Kart and cards? That deal is more explosive than Bombette. Good luck to Giga on this run, as well as to myself as I'm staying up all night to catch all these wonderful runs until I head to work tomorrow morning. Put this towards the cannon in Bloodborne. All right, this mini game is also random. And yeah, the number of throws between the boos varies between 6 and 10. 10 obviously being the worst. So we can actually skip Bo, but she's kind of too useful to skip. So we're gonna get her. Doesn't waste that much time. We need to see her boots anyway.
Yeah, you can read more donations, I guess. No problem. We got a $20 donation from Code Bear Cat. Love the stream, and what a great cause. Everyone is affected by cancer in some way, so this is a very noble cause. Got a $50 donation from Ithium. Uh, Paper Mario is one of my favorite childhood games, and I'm excited to watch it broken. This is my first GDQ I've attended, and it is a blast. Paracarry is the best partner. It's pretty good. Yeah. $30 from Spencer K. Love watching my favorite game being played for such a great cause. Since Luisi does actually nothing and tells such long, insufferable stories in a thousand year tour, keep him far away from that party. I agree. Tell like the person knows what's up. <laughs> Got $50 from Bolt. Take pity on Luigi. He does his best. No, he doesn't. Not in this game. A uh, $20 donation from T. Uh, Jer Minus. Uh, time for my third GDQ, time for my third donation, time for Paper Mario, time for animal killing. Zero Tool 787 donates $25. Love this game when I was younger. Seeing this played again brings back a lot of old memories. Money to runner's choice. So yeah, we're, we're gonna go get, we're getting Bo very shortly. Um, she's extremely useful because of her ability to make Mario invincible for a turn by giving up her own, which in a few spots is just very critical. Um, any percent wouldn't get her though, even though she's really useful because it's just, you don't even go to chapter 3 at all, so it's kind of unfortunate. So chapter 3 is... It's kind of long, well, with Bo's Mansion kind of makes it a bit long. And actually, you can skip a few cutscenes here, but it's it's so dumb. You, It's actually slower to watch them, because you have to go out of your way to be able to trigger something else and make them go away. Also, remember, this is one... So, after fighting all those Dark Koopas, we, liter we got first struck on purpose, so now Giga should have around 1 HP. Yeah, yeah you didn't get it harder, so he'll have 1, yeah. he'll have one HP. Uh, and that means that if anything first strikes him... With the exception of a Paragoomba, if he manages to block that, he's, he will yeah, die. Yeah, I will die. So, so it's yeah. it's pretty easy to avoid most of the enemies here, but nonetheless, it's yeah. it's a it's a choke that can happen. It's yeah. happened to pretty much everyone who's ran this game. I will be saving as soon as I get to tell Bloodos. None of the enemies should be that bad. There's only one enemy that you're like common to get an encounter with, and he does he can't really first strike you. So we call this guy Big Flub. <laughs> yeah. Shouts to SLD for coming up with that name. Yeah, Stanley gets eaten there. Poor Stanley. All right, so this screen coming up is one that causes quite a bit of trouble for newer players and some experienced runners alike. Now, Giga just made it look really easy, but he actually has a really short amount of time before he has to go under that item block with the Repel Gel, bonk it, and get the Repel Gel, because that Hyper Goomba is literally camping that area. And if you stand by just even a little bit too long, he will get you, and it's really annoying place to get into encounter. Yeah, so this is one of the... Pueblo's Castle is kind of scary, and also has a, a few minor optimizations. Um, if, again, if I get first struck, I will die, because there's really no access to live streams this early in the run. Oh, I spawned him. <laughs> That's fine. Normally, he takes a little bit longer to see you. And these clubs are pretty, you know, should we say lazy? Yeah. Sleeping on the job. There's actually a badge in the game. I, for I forgot what it's called. Uh, so I think it's, yeah, Slogo, which literally yeah. makes Mario unable to run and just walk. And it was mostly, I believe, designed for this segment of the game for people to just who are just really bad at dodging clothes, I guess. And yeah, I'm going to wake him up. Because that's, that's how you don't wake him up, just walk. Yeah, but you can just walk anyway, so it's really pretty pointless. So by the way, you got caught by that UFO yeah. on purpose. Yeah, this saves like seven-ish seconds to get caught. Yeah, now he didn't have to backtrack all the way up the stairs to get to the main room. Missouri needs to go next. So yeah, if you, uh, also, if you've noticed, this 
this uh, castle is all about using bow to dodge these security, but you just move so fast with speedy spin that you don't even need to use bow at all during the segment. Yeah, you'll note like this segment you'll really notice the developers clearly did not really take speedy spin into an account when designing the area too well. Yeah, that looks a little bit scarier than it is. He can't really get you if you do it right. Yeah, especially this next area coming up. It's like magic. Speed spin. Yeah, and you're supposed to use bow in this room, but if I do this correctly, I don't need it. Okay, I just barely need it. It always looks like we barely get it. Yeah. Honestly, it's not... It's one of those things that actually isn't as hard as it looks. Yeah. I think you can do that little cool jump off the chest on, into the spikes, send you back to the beginning of the room. So, a lot of people don't really know about this badge because it's kind of hidden well. I did not know that you could push that claw casually. And you can do a little optimization here where you just pair carry against that and don't have to open the drawer. I don't know how, but I randomly found this badge when I played this game when I was little. Yeah, I was lucky, I guess. All right, so that's the Mega Rush badge. That's the that's the thing I mentioned earlier. That's gonna let him do a ton of extra damage when he is in peril. So at one HP, like he is right now. Yeah, that, that strat looks a lot scarier than it is. But yeah, like reminder, if I got hit by that, I would have been dead. Shouts so. to Pi for that strat, by the way. Again, so this room you normally use bow and let him pass you, but if he just yeah, hugs he the wall with speedy spin, he'll always get past him. And you're like, it's pretty intended to like tiptoe past these guys, but you could just let them gather at the front and spin past them. Sometimes they won't follow you though, and you might not notice, and on your way back you'll run into them. It's a pretty annoying little thing that can so, happen. Yeah, again, that minor optimization of doing things while locks are unlocking to save a little bit of time. It's not really a costume skip, it's more like the cutscenes overlap. Alright, so coming up we have the Tile Level Cutscene, so you can read a few donations. No problem, we got a $50 donation from Kirby Master. Kirby Master here, I've always been a big fan of Paper Mario speedruns and have been watching GigaDB streams. It's been an experience watching the Paper Mario speedrun develop over the past few years, and I'm excited to see all of the developments being showcased in this marathon. Good luck, Giga, and I'm loving the couch commentary and the audience hype. Good luck on Final Bowser Fight, you'll need it. Put this donation yeah. to bring Luigi to the party. He needs more love. <laughs> Boo. Disappointing you, Kirby. <laughs> yeah. So coming up now um, is the escape sequence. Um, there actually is a trick here. Um, it's really weird, but it's very similar to that thing that I did earlier with the drawer, where Paracarry kind of just gets boosted when you use him. It has something to do with, like, the collision. Like, Mario's hitbox has changed a bit when he's using Paracarry, which is used if, is abused a few times during this round. Alright, going for yeah. swag jump. Uh, here I'll mash A and B, and the, the game forces you to lock the door, but you have time to do, a, like, an action while you do it, so I'll see if I get anything. Aww. I got nothing, okay. <laughs> so normally you would, like, go all the way around, but if you use Paracarry right here, you'll just pop up right here, and you can spin down. Out. Yeah, it's it's a, it's pretty minor. It only saves like five seven seconds, but it's pretty good. Yeah, pretty the amount cool. of time it takes to do the trick kind of compensates for the fact that you're running down the hall. Normally, it's, it's not as, it, do, it saves time, but not as much as they did. It's also kind of scary because if if you touch Tabaluba, then there's a good chance you won't be able to run away from him, and he'll and he'll kill you. Yeah, your run bar starts at the bottom. If you do, do not not a lot of oh, people I got know. I got text. Oh, good. Nice. Um, normally there's a text box that stops you, like, halfway through the room, but if you're fast enough and lucky enough, then the text box just doesn't show up, so I got it there. It saves one second. But yeah, I was saying earlier, not a lot of people know that you actually, if Tubba does catch you, not a lot of people know that you would actually fight him, and he is, he, true to his name, he is actually invincible, and he's quite strong, so don't fight him. Unless you want to die. Yeah. In which case, be my guess. <laughs> We have some Goombas to dodge here, which, it looks pretty tight, especially in this corner. here. They, I, they're pretty obviously kind of due to fight them, but you can jump over them kind of easily. We got two of them. Yeah, in this third room coming up, he has to remember to yeah. equip 
uh, Power Bounce and Mega Rush before starting the fight. Otherwise, you can't win it. So you can lose. So this is one example of the game being unforgiving. You forget to do this one little equip before this boss. There's no way you can beat this, it. That's, yeah. Yep, you're dead. dead. Um, and here you'll get to see the magic of Power Bounce plus Mega Rush, because those are the only two badges I'm wearing right now. But it's really all I need. As far as caps are concerned, he'd either like a six or a, a six cap plus a four cap, or two five caps, and he just got a six, which is really good. Yeah. If you get uh, a five and a four cap or worse, then you'll have to use Pyrrha Carry on the second turn. It's not a big deal, it's just a minor loss of time. So yet again, you're intended to use Bow to dodge this attack, but we're kind of overpowered, so he just dies right now. Yeah, the fight's scripted to such a degree as such that you do enough damage to him, he'll do that charge attack, no matter what. So yeah, we're coming to the end of Chapter 3, so I think we should get a head start on um, the next glitch coming up, which is Chapter 3, Card LZS, or Loading Zone Storage. So would you like to explain sure. that? Sure. Uh, so LZS is... Perhaps one of the most notorious and difficult tricks in the all cards category. And the idea behind it is Giga is going to do a frame perfect jump. So, in other words, he's going to jump into the loading zone, and the exact frame that he touches the ground of the loading zone, he wants to press the A button and get a jump. And what this will do is it'll kind of store the loading zone. So, in order for the game to actually take you through the next screen when you enter a loading zone, you have to be on the ground for more than one frame. But being on the ground for that one frame makes the game think you're on a loading zone. And yeah. yeah, so, that boss is really hard, right? You just yeah. gotta press A. So, I did it. That was a really hard boss. So anyway, so anyway... Ah. Uh. <laughs> yeah, Stanley saved. Um, and now, I, as Bass was trying to explain, I'm going to be doing six consecutive frame-perfect jumps in order to do this. And on, with those jumps, I have to input a, um, a left on analog at the same time I press A, otherwise it won't work. So it's kind of, you can kind of consider it 12 frame-perfect inputs, but it's really more like six. Some people just describe it as double frame-perfect yeah. inputs. But yeah, so anyway, the way the trick works again is he has to do these frame-perfect jumps. He's going to delay moving on to the next screen through the loading zone by doing these frame-perfect jumps. And by doing this, I'm he'll save be first. Yeah. yeah. So by doing this, uh, he'll be able to grab that card, but skip the Peach intermission because the amount of time it takes to actually load the Peach intermission is slow enough that the loading <laughs> zone. First try. Whoa, oh, it's really good. Again, it's much, much harder than it looks. It takes a lot of practice. Yeah, I, have, I have put in countless hours into that. I'm so happy I got that first try. <laughs> this man is the truth. <laughs> yeah, that, that is the longest LZS2, so thankfully it's the first one. But yeah, there's there's a couple of peculiarities with LZS. Like, for example, he has to space his jumps appropriately, because if he touches the card at the wrong point in his jump, uh, the Peach cutscene will still tr be triggered, even if he stored the loading zone correctly. If you, so saw in the back, if you saw in the back there, there's another sushi. That's why I yeah. saved. All right, so... <laughs> Another glitch coming up. So this is called... This is a really cool glitch, too. Yeah. So yeah, this is called Yoshi. Some people call it Yoshi Skip. Some people call it Raphael Skip. And this skips the whole saving Yoshi and visiting Raphael the Raven segment in Chapter 5. And he'll just head straight to the volcano by clipping through the tree with Paracarry, yeah. like he just did. Colorado likes to hang out with me out of bounds right now. And he did... He had to maneuver himself very carefully oh. to get Sorry. underneath that loading zone. If you're not careful, you can trigger it by accident. Oh, uh, that's really bad. Yeah. For some reason, I wasn't on the right ledge. I right, have to do it again. Yeah, if you're too f if you're too far forward with that, like too far yeah, forward. Yeah, Paracarry gets trick. stuck to you. <laughs> it's kind of fun. It's really annoying. All right. Yeah, of all things to fail, I failed this. This is like really easy in yeah. comparison. To LZS, LZS first try, but Raphael skip. Clip and bounce. It's really annoying. There we right. go. That should work. Yep. And we're in the volcano. All right, so coming up is a little optimization coming up. There's a platform that's way out to the right that's just going to reach the left as soon as he gets to the, across the screen, like right now. Let's see if he gets it. And he got it. 
It's a bit harder than it looks. He has to make... He has to... It's a bit hard to describe, but basically he has to jump and spin as fast as he can without falling into the lava. It's, it's pretty easy when you're trying to go fast like that to fall into the lava by accident miss out and getting that early cycle platform right there. Yeah, something to note, um, VC lags really badly in Volcano, so if you, if you like, watch this side-by-side -side with VC, it's, like, really, really nice to look at N64 instead. Yeah, it's one of the reasons why any percent is quite a bit faster than N64. You have to go through this segment, or this part, of, this area in the game many times. Right, nice, that was, yes. that was Lava Scoop. Yep. It's not really, really a glitch, but you can skip solving that puzzle if you pair carry right and um, hit the ledge at a certain way. It's kind of like pie jump. Alright, so the reason that trick is actually considered a glitch is, you notice he just got the Ultra Hammer, and similar yeah. to how I mentioned with the staircase in Chapter 1, that's a trigger. So logically, the game thought you had to cross those blocks to get over there. Well, by picking up that Ultra Hammer, the blocks are just magically over there. Yeah. That's very convenient. Apparently, uh, self-solving puzzles are banned in Glitchless, so you can't do that. So, we have time for, like, one donation real quick. All right, we got a $30 donation from Arcade Noah. I've been hyped for this run all week. Best of luck to GigaDB on this amazing run. My donation goes to killing the animals because speedruns are about going fast. So I did that on purpose. I need to take um, damage to get to one HP. Um, and interestingly, we can utilize a sort of a glitch, I guess, but um, which would you normally think would be completely harmful, but by opening your menu on a lava bar, you can just cancel your invincibility for it to take a lot of damage, which you would think would be useless, but I actually want to be at 1 HP, so it's actually helpful. Yeah, obviously we're getting really close to a boss, and just like with the last boss, we're going to use Mega Rush's Power Bounce to obliterate him much faster than you think like possible at first glance. And here you can do a pretty easy thing. Hopefully I get it first try. Yep, you can just pair carry through that rock. Yeah. We refer to that as Flare Carry because we named it after the person who found it, Flare. <laughs> um, if you skip Colorado's texture, which you can easily do by using Speedy Spin, the game will actually soft lock after you beat the Chapter Five boss. It's really bad. Well, not really soft lock, but like you can it, like messes up the game, and then you have to you can't progress, and you have to fight the boss again, which is really yeah, fun. not something a lot of people don't know about, and I would say one of the main, if not only thing, that's useful about Pies really old all cards tutorial is it does mention that so people like me who did happen to look at it for a little bit ha I happen to know about that so I've never experienced that problem runs but most so, people aren't so lucky. So in this fight there's a very slim chance that it'll die but it won't happen don't worry about it. Yeah you got this. Nice dude. Uh, I could have got a 7 I missed though. No big deal though. Just in case. Oh, wait. What? Oh, oh no, messed I messed up! up. Oh. Oh. I, yeah, I'm gonna have to restart that fight. Oh, wait, I have a life stream, never mind. <laughs> but how am I getting back into peril? This screws up everything. Oh, wait a second. Better do five damage. Oh, it yes! Did. Look at that! It's almost like it was planned. Anyway, this is a really good first phase. He got a seven cap on. Well, he missed. The I bottom, missed the seven bounce, but, but yeah. it doesn't really. It didn't matter much. But yeah, he got a seven cap and a four cap. So this gives the fastest possible. Well, more or less the fastest possible first phase. Because if you get lower caps, like let's say double fours, you'd have to do fully charged belly flops. Oh yeah, spoilers. Just a phase two. Totally spoiled. It. Just use squirt, and we'll be able to hurt hurt him again. I see he's a four here. This fight is very, very generous with the way we have it routed out with uh, power bounce caps. You can pretty much always do it, but there's a very rare chance you get three, that you get three caps, which has happened to me in a few rounds. It, you can still win, but it's um, you have to waste a lot of time. Yeah, getting a three cap on most bosses, with the exception of the final bosses, is is like maybe less than a 5% chance. No one's really been able to calculate it exactly, but it's extremely rare by this game standards. I only needed three there, so I just stopped. Yeah. 
There's a few other bosses in the game also where if you get three cap, it's gen your run is generally dead. Nothing you can do about it. So yeah, if um if I didn't have that Colorado text, the game would just like freeze here. The card wouldn't spawn, and the camera would be stuck there. But you could just leave, so it's kind of strange. So yeah, this is um another card that I'll be touching, like the chapter one card. Um, strange enough, you you cannot make this card go away with card LZS. The other card you clearly saw, it went away after I touched it, even with LZS. This one is the is one of a kind because this card is not connected to a Peach cutscene. So if if I did the LZS, even if I touched the card, it would just still be there, and I I have to touch it like yeah. directly to progress. We still have to do the escape sequence coming up in order to actually trigger the next Peach in the mission. But we'll be able to exploit that later. Yeah, the only reason I actually need to do this escape right now is because I need the Chapter 5 seat, which only is available right after you do Chapter 5. But, like, nor well, not completely normally. There actually is a way to skip Lava Prana, but it doesn't spawn the card, so... We have to do it in all cards. Any person skips Lava Prana, though, but does Chapter 5 still. So, um, and if you if you do Lava Piranha skip, then these cutscenes also don't play, which is nice, but I have to watch them. Alright, I think we have time for a few donations. Yeah. We have a $20 donation from Brant. Love Paper Mario and love AGDQ. Money to runner's choice. We have a $69.69 donation from Nat22. <laughs> Paper Mario hype. Thanks for making Insomnia fun for a week. I'm enjoying all the streams and can't wait for more Zelda and Final Fantasy. Keep up the amazing work and let's kick Cancer's butt. Runner's choice. Got an anonymous $25 donation? Put this to Crowd's choice on bringing Luigi. Then if they choose to bring him, put it to not bringing him anyway, because it's obviously <laughs> the right choice. Yeah. We got a $50 donation from Erifram. Loving the Paper Mario run, although it is not Super Mario RPG 2, it was a wonderful sequel and I enjoy playing. Can't wait to try. Uh, can't wait to try some of these techniques myself. <sighs> yeah, we got a Peach cutscene now where I have to. I do have to dodge some guards this time, but it's really not much, so you can just keep reading donations. Uh, this is kind of weird because this one donation is $300 from Low Poly Freak. They want me to do it in the voice, so <laughs> let me just hold on a sec. <clears throat> Amazing run, guys! And thanks to everyone making AGDQ happen! And don't be so harsh on poor Luigi! Yo, tear him apart! Half this donation goes to Runner's Choice! <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> Snake is nothing on Peach, okay? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, the guards, instead of taking Peach back to room this time, they decide they want to play a game show with her for some reason. Um, and this game show is really silly because you can just mash A, but if you mash A, you win, you win the game. But I don't want to win the game, which is <laughs> it's really dumb. So I will say yes to every, I will choose the first answer to all of them except the last one. And if I do that, then I get exactly five wrong and five right, and no one wins anything, which is the fastest ending. It's only, there's only a few to seconds difference between what else can happen. If Peach wins, she just gets a jam and jelly, and the Koopa Trills can win too. Just think about the frames though. Yeah. So yeah, we're just breezing through this. We have a $20 donation from the Mathlete. Just making a donation towards bringing Luigi to the party. Hope I'm not too late. Alright, so yeah, I chose the second option on that last one again because now I don't win anything. Well, I, I still get the uh, participation prize, which is much more useful than Gemma Jelly, the sneaky parasol. You can read a couple more. No problem, we got a $10 donation from Nez. Long time, uh, watch first time donator. Had to donate during one of my favorite games of all time. Keep up the great work, the uh, stream is amazing. 
We also got a $10 donation from Poop Josh. One of the things I love about AGDQ so much is that I get to experience all of the games I missed in my childhood. Paper Mario is one of those games. I'll be living vigorously through you, GigaDB. Live it up for me, buddy. I'll try. $75 donation from Monster63Tom. I have loved these runs so far, and I can't wait to see the rest of them. Also got an anonymous $10 donation. Longtime watcher, first time donating. I didn't get a chance to donate during some of the other runs, so I figured Paper Mario was a good time. I played this game a lot when I was younger and happy to see it run so masterfully. Oh, and kill the animals. So as you can see in the little village there, um, there are no baby Yoshis anymore um, because the game kind of doesn't know what to do with them. They, normally they get lost in the forest and wants to save them, but now so after I beat Chapter 5 without rescuing any of them, they're just no longer to be found in the, in the town or in the forest, so maybe they kind of died. Oh well. Alright, Colorado coughed it up already. Thank you. <laughs> Got the seed from him. See, that's second out of that's the second out of the four that we will need to get to chapter six later on. All right, so Actually, next up, yeah. Yeah. next up we have uh, chapter four. Um, there's not too many things in chapter four. There's a. Uh, the fights are kind of hard though, um, and actually on, on the VC version, it can get really, really hectic in Chapter 4, but thankfully, I'm not playing on that version. Um, yeah. The game lags really, really bad in Chapter 4 in the, Wii v in the Wii VC version, and it actually lags so bad that the game tries to speed itself up to try to compensate, which it would normally you think would be good, but if it speeds up while you're trying to action command, you'll miss it every time, and it's really bad. But, yeah, again, th that won't happen during this run. Yeah, for many people that run this game on VC, Chapter 4 is a major, major run killer for that reason. So, yeah, the N64 is faster for all cards, but let's be real. This is one of the really nice things about being able to run all cards on N64 is not having to deal with all of this annoying stuff flag in Chapter 4. And we, haven't re we didn't really mention this, but... Um, like, I'm just so used to it, but we're doing this chapter is really out of order. I did one, then three, then five, then four. So, we're just running around all over the place now. Um, so, as long as, basically, as long as we do three first, the route is pretty fast because of Mega Rush early. Alright, this is also, this also might be confusing to some people. So, we are, the reason we are going to Pink Station first is we need to hit that switch, as otherwise we can't get back. Yeah. And also, another thing we didn't even mention, um, that the toy train is there, and because the game right now thinks I'm still in chapter 5, so we're going to use this mechanic a little bit. When when you beat a later chapter and you haven't beaten an earlier chapter, you can do some wonky things in those chapters. So right now, the game like kind of thinks it'll be chapter 4, but not really. Like Some things are still undone. So um, by doing some of the things that are like left undone, I can re-trigger the game into chapter 4, um, which I have to do because right now, General Guy is not there. He's like the boss of chapter 4. He, the, the path to him is completely opened, but I can't actually fight him. He's not there. Oh, and normally um, you get to choose what comes here, but because I never did the Chapter 3 Peach cutscene, it defaults to the first option, which is Fussies, so yeah. I have to fight these. It'd be really nice if we could be able to get the Thunder Rage somehow, but unfortunately we can't. So you might ask why I'm getting the Frying Pan, and the only reason that we get the Frying Pan is, like I said, to ch I'm finishing some of those unfinished things. I'm also doing this wall clip right here, I didn't even mention that. Yeah, he doesn't even really need to do it, but he's doing it here because that uh, balloon guy just over there. If you decide to use the Jack in the Box to get to the other side, Mario, for some reason, has this long animation, well, it's not really, lack of animation. He just sits there for around a second or so, and during that time, you're vulnerable to enemies, so very good chance that you get first struck there if you take that way out. All right, coming up, one of the at least if you're playing on VC anyway, one of the most annoying boss fights in the entire game. Thankfully, we're on N64, so it's not so bad. Yeah, I can make this platform cycle if I'm fast. Uh, I should have oh, gone for that. Alright. Yeah, I'm just gonna reload it. 
Sometimes it seems like it's impossible to actually make this cycle, and I don't really know what causes it, but it's kind of dumb. Yeah, for some reason... I'm just going to wait it out. The rotation of the spinning platform at this, when you enter the room is not consistent. We don't really know why that is, but it's... Okay. <laughs> yeah. This game sometimes does not like to make you jump when you press A. It's unfortunate. Yeah, he also has to be careful. He doesn't want to jump too much by accident, because if he jumps on the fire guy, he'll end up taking one point of damage. And that would make this fight coming up quite a bit harder. Okay. So, you may not think wall tubes are kind of are very useful, but for this fight, it can provide a, a, kind of a big safety net. Um, so I'm going to be like doing two things at once. I'm setting up the Voltrum so he takes extra damage when he hits me. And I'm also going to be getting into Peril, this setting up Peril in this fight at the same time. Yeah, it's pretty nice. Uh, quite a long time ago, we used to use that Pyro guy in the very front of the room and block one of those attacks to get into Peril. But then we realized the Lantern Ghost will always just attack you at the start of the fight if you don't hit the Lantern and he does five damage. So just block one attack and you're basically set. And I got four caps. Yeah, Alright, I'm gonna have to do bad. a slower strat now. In RTA attempts, you wouldn't be using a slower strat, because if you get a four cap, in order to actually lose this fight, if and if you were to power bounce him directly again in the next turn, in order to actually lose, you need another four cap, and getting four cap in this fight's pretty It's pretty uncommon. it's pretty uncommon, but it's just like just common enough to be a threat, so unfortunately it was prevalent here. But that's the nice thing about the Vulture, though. If we didn't have that Voltrum and did the same strap with the blocking, we would need two five caps or a seven to four, like Lava Piranha, to get this fast fight. So many, many runs have died to Lantern Ghost yeah. just from getting a four cap on the second turn. The second turn we bounce on him. Yeah, it was it was really bad before we started using that Voltrum. Alright, so now we get Watt. Watt's pretty useful, um, because she can pierce defense when she attacks. So um, and she, her attack does not cost any FP, so she will be used, like when I just need to get in some extra damage, she will be used the most. Um, if I need more damage, um, and FP is plentiful, then I'll use Spike Pair Carry instead. Yeah, it's nice because the boss coming up actually has two defense. So being, and the actual amount of damage we do is pretty strict, so being able to do that four damage, which is why we're up upgrading Watt right now, one of the main reasons by the way, is really, really nice. Oh, that was really weird. Okay. Going over, uh, you can go over the over the wall there, and it saves a little bit of time. I kind of like clipped on the platform, so it threw me off. I was, didn't think I was gonna make it up there. All right, this fight coming up on N64, since there isn't a lag, isn't so bad, but nonetheless, very important to save. Because if he didn't, he'd have to fight Lantern Ghost again. And there's a lot of steps to this fight, and usually making a single mistake most of the phases is fatal. Yeah, this fight is extremely unforgiving, especially on VC, as we mentioned. Um, in this fight alone, I think about... I don't know I'm going this way, whatever. About, like, five seconds, I think, are saved. It's somewhere, but I know, like, Chapter 4 saves, like, ten seconds on Men64, roughly. I'm not, some of that comes from Lantern Ghost, some of that comes from General Guy, just because of how laggy those fights can be. Alright, General Guy does have some pretty nice music. Yeah, it's pretty epic, honestly. Um, I have it on my playlist. <laughs> Alright, so phase one is pretty straightforward. And again, I'm in peril, so I'm up on Lantern Ghost. Let's hit a jump command. He actually has to fully charge this. If he doesn't, he'll only do one damage. Yeah, and then they'll kill me. Well, I can't I can block him, I guess. That's pretty tricky, though. Alright, I have to remember to Star Storm here because I had to do a safe strat on Lantern Ghost. Um, normally, I can skip Star Storm here. Um, and if you, if I do RTA runs, then I will. I should always have enough FP to use Power Quake here instead. But unfortunately, I had to have a slower Lantern Ghost fight. It's pretty unfortunate. It's not as big of a deal though in N64 because yeah. on VC, Star Storm is one of the laggiest moves in the game, and on a laggy fight like this, no less, it's, it takes forever to actually do anything. 
If you ever watch a run of this done on DC back in the old days. Alright, and now we have the Shy Guys text. These guys are actually really annoying. I tried playing, like, I route a lot of stuff in this game, and I tried out different strats. I could not come up with a good strat for these guys. Like, that was faster than what we do now. And what we do is pretty okay. Like, we just jump one of them. And then we power shot the other. Yeah, it's another area in the game also where you can occasionally get lag spikes and miss action commands on. Not as common as with General Guy himself and Minor Ghost, but it can happen. Alright, now we have the actual fight with him. So, this fight is kind of um, dangerous, so we're going to be using our Pell Gel now. But this is, this is done in RTA attempts, too. Alright. Oh, we get oh, bomb, yeah. that's good. Um, his lightning attack and bomb attack are, are pretty different. Um, his lightning attack is a long animation, so we want bombs as much as possible. Alright, that power bounce right there is usually the main scary turn of this entire fight on VC. Yeah, unfortunately, we got lightning, but I guess you have to see it now, how long it takes. Still, one bomb is not bad at all. Um, if I was playing on VC, I would never go for that jump because you usually die on that jump because the game speeds up and you miss the jump. Yeah, also the timing window for regular jumps is a lot less forgiving than the first bounce of a power bounce. So, if you get a speed up of any kind, it's pretty bad. Alright, and that's our last FP upgrade as well. So, coming up uh, again, we have another uh, card LCS. So, um, because this one, you can fail card LCS in a way that it triggers the cutscene, so, and this cutscene is the longest one, so I will be going all the way back to that save block and saving, just, just in case. Yeah. Sorry to disappoint anyone in the audience, but we're not going to be baking cakes today. Yeah, no so. cakes. <laughs> Especially not soap cakes, like someone likes to bake. <laughs> it's unfortunate, too, because the save block for before this card is pretty far away, and there's an enemy at the past. It's a bit annoying. Yeah, all the other ones like have a save log right next to them, but this one takes forever. Alright, semi serious time. Alright. First try again. <laughs> I swear, they're frame perfect. Like, it doesn't look like it, though. That's another trick that's a bit harder in VC as well, because that room is also laggy, so it affects the timing slightly of the jumps. Alright, so now we're piecing out of Chapter 4. We did everything we need to do. Uh, next is, uh, of course, what comes after Chapter 4 is Chapter 2. So we're going to go do Chapter 2 yeah, now. that's logical. Yeah, that's the most logical thing. But to be precise, the way we've routed this game, it's we have to actually beat chapter six, seven, and eight in that order. So the only remaining chapter left to do, if we think if we think of it from that perspective, is chapter two, since we're gonna go there. But first we have to go and get the seed. Because it just so happens to be convenient. It's the most convenient time to get the seed. It's not really on the way, but there isn't really a more convenient time to get it either, yeah. so we have to quickly go get it. You might ask why we didn't go through for forest anyway, since we have to get the seed to get to chapter three. But um, Junior Troopa fights you in the forest if you're past chapter three. Um, so if we by opening that pipe we can skip him, and that fight is really slow normally, so gladly we can skip him. And that fuzzy can be a pain butt sometimes, but he was good this time. Yeah, just picking up the last seat. I think we have time for a couple donations. Yeah. No problem. We got a $101 donation from uh, Tal Valian. Had to donate during my favorite game of all time, Paper Mario. Loving the run so far. I'm praying for good RNG on Final Bowser. Keep streaming big, everyone. Got a $10 donation from Zach194. Got to donate because of that adorable announcement voice in one of my favorite N64 games ever. Uh, Kappa Kappa. We're going to take an extra safety save here. 
Yeah, this next boss fight's not really difficult, but extremely unforgiving if you make a single mistake on. And the strat that we use is kind of weird, so we're just gonna go brain dead, and you know, just just let we're just, yeah. gonna, we're just gonna you know scout him out first. Yeah. We're not sure what to do, you know. Yeah, I'm pretty bad at blocking his attacks too, as you can see. You know, maybe we'll just do a regular jump. We don't want yeah. we don't want to invest that peanut power bounce. So let's let's just do a regular jump, just to chip that his health a little bit. You know? Oh, he's electric. I wonder what happens if I touch him. Ow. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, my partner doesn't want to do anything. Oh look! Conveniently at one HP. That means I get Mega Rush boost. All right, so now he needs two five caps to beat him, and Blooper. Electro Blooper is actually one one of the most gener generous bosses in the game with caps. He's pretty much always guaranteed a 5 cap. Or better than a 5 cap, so there's no RNG whatsoever if this boss fight caps like pretty much all the others. Alright, right, yeah, that boss fight is completely optional, by the way. You, you can easily beat the game without fighting him, even glitchless, but um. It's actually faster to go through here. It also gives us a nice chunk of experience, too. Yeah. Alright, so he saved with coins earlier, he mentioned, and that's to buy items in the shop, specifically three Thunderbolts. And uh, we haven't really mentioned this, but most of the items that we're going to be picking up from this point onward are going to be saved for the final boss. Yeah. All three of those Thunderbolts are just for Final Bowser, so... The Final Bowser is a very, very annoying fight that requires a lot of setup, so a lot of the things that we get are just for that fight. So yeah, um, being able to go to the ruins from the outpost is pretty fast, because going through all of Mount Rugged is really is not that fast at all. And also we want to take the Ultra Hammer into the ruins, because it can speed things up a lot. Yeah, it's also nice since... Because of triggers, the ruins are already here, so we don't have to yeah. do that whole must stop the side quest. Well, it's not really a side quest, but you know what I mean. Um, so something to note about ruins is that it has some really weird angles for movement. If you hold straight right, you'll end up just going against the wall and curving downward. So I'm going to be trying to take really precise angles so that I can get to the doors normally, even though it looks like I'm just holding a straight direction. Again, uh, I also mentioned earlier, since the ruins are already up, and we're at a state in the game where it thinks that we should be past chapter two, so several parts of the ruins are already partially complete. Yeah, that's why I was able to just breeze through that that room with the sand. The sand was already lowered, and I could just pick up the key also, which normally you can't do. And what's nice is a lot of these fights we can exploit uh, power bounce. Well, not in this fight, but yeah. also mega rush. So we mega can do these fights much faster than in the older all card drops where we did chapter two in the original order. I also have to be really careful of heart drops. If I get a heart drop, it wastes like 20 seconds. So thankfully, the hearts didn't even come close to getting me that time, but sometimes they can just get you. There's nothing you can do about it. Yeah, we could always fight the boss without peril strats, but it's a lot slower. Like, what's the point of completing this? Well, it's one of the points of completing this chapter order if we have to fight the boss more slowly. Yeah, so this part, you might be confused because you saw, again, like, the boss door is open, and I'm still collecting the stones. Again, Toon Koop is not there, similar to General Guy, he's not there. I have to re-trigger the game into Chapter 2 before I can beat him. So, I have to get all the stones first. It's just like with the Frying Pan Chapter 4, we're going to pick something else up in just a minute to actually re-trigger the game into thinking it's in Chapter 2, and it's one of the most... Believe it or not, it's actually one of the most important aspects of this route, which we'll yeah. explain in just a bit once we get the item. So, you know, this old hammer's looking kind of old, don't you think? Yeah. Um, we'll get the new new super hammer. It's much better, right? It does two less damage. Yeah, it looks cleaner too. So yes, um, picking up the super hammer is actually required, and it does actually downgrade my hammer into an, a super hammer, but I don't actually need the old hammer anymore, believe it or not. Fun fact, we saved a lot of time just now because we already had the Ultra Hammer. We didn't have to do that really annoying puzzle to change the staircase directions. And just break, instead we could just break the block to the Super Hammer directly. So it's, that's another reason, that's yet another reason why doing Chapter 2 at this time is faster. And we upgrade Bombette there. Um, when you upgrade Bombette, she gets a uh, multi-hit, well not 
like she attacks like one enemy multiple times, but she attacks multiple enemies at the same time. You'll notice when you use Power Quake just now, it still does the same amount of damage even though he downgraded his hammer. So at Peril, for example, an untimed Power Quake does six damage. So it's one of the fastest ways of attacking multiple enemies. So we're going to be using it a bit more throughout the run. So this order with the keys is also the same every time. So you just simply memorize it. And you're on your merry way. Yeah, we still get this awesome cutscene where Mario does whatever he's doing, running back and forth. So this fight is pretty fast and safe, but sometimes some things can go wrong, so I'll, I'll save just in case. Most of the thing, no, actually, the only real things that could go wrong in this fight are pretty much on you. There's a little bit of RNG with the caps, but it doesn't really waste that much time. If you get a three cap, you have to use an extra turn, but it doesn't yeah. really waste. It doesn't really waste that much time. Three caps on this fight are really rare in general, but they can still happen. But I can, with, I can compensate for it anyway. Yeah, the only real thing you have to worry about is just timing your power bounces and jumps and menuing as well, which we'll get to in just a second. So he's going to summon this chomp, and one really annoying thing is that chomp's going to be to the left, so when he menus, he has to move the cursor to the right before jumping on him. So he has to be careful not to mash. And, and while that seems small, also Mario jumps much earlier than he does for the power bounce, so it's a little bit different. And because, unfortunately, I did not have all the fright drives work properly in Chapter 1, I'm going to level up here instead of in Chapter 6. Alright, so we have our last uh, card LZS in the run coming up now. Yeah, some people find this one to be the most awkward, because now, in order to jump into the loading zone, there's a low ceiling that's in the way, so he has to time the first jump a bit differently, yeah. so it's not as a consistent rhythm that I can just easily memorize. So even though it's the fewest amount of jumps, some people consider it to be the most difficult. Alright, I gotta stay first. Also, this LZS is mandatory. There's one thing we haven't mentioned yet, but when you touch the cup... Oh, three. First, He's a pro. All three LZS's first try. <laughs> That's awesome. I did not... I did not expect to come here and fail easy things like Raph Skip and get all the LZS first try. But Those yeah. are the hardest tricks in the room. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, so I was mentioning earlier, so that LZS is mandatory, and the reason for that is in the next chapter coming up, he is going to need Star Storm for a lot of the fights. And when you touch the card normally, it will actually reset your star power to whatever chapter you're in originally. So if he had touched that into LZS, his star power would have been set to two, and he wouldn't have had Star Storm. So you could, in theory, complete the next segment without Star Storm, but it'd be a lot more painful. These cacti can be really frustrating. If you don't, if you hold straight down right, you can you'll actually just spin into them and get stuck. So I have to take a bit more precise angles around them. All right, I think we got time for a few more donations. All right, we got a ten dollar donation from Marissa. It's not much, but I had to donate for one of my favorite games of all time. So impressed by GigaDB and pretty much lost it when he got the loading zone skip on the first try. Put this little bit to leaving Luigi behind, because the year of Luigi is long gone. Agreed. Got an anonymous $50 donation. Bring the animals to the party, leaving <laughs> Luigi behind. We a $40 donation from Jonathan. A great speed runs on the pinball and good luck on the Mario run. We also got another blank no comment donation. It's anonymous of $2,000. Wow. <laughs> Guess I don't have anything to say. <laughs> <laughs> Got a $15 donation from Artful Homes. Uh, loving the Paper Mario run. You know, in times like these, there's nothing more delicious, more tasty than a nice height slice of Papa John's pizza. <laughs> Shout outs to Pie once again. <laughs> Got a $50 donation from Complete Misfire. This Paper Mario run is mind-blowing. Thanks to my friend for introducing me to AGDQ. I'm so happy that I can donate and do my own version of a speedrun for a great cause. 
Bring Luigi. All he wants to do is party. <laughs> Got $11 from Dog Bass? Sad because no cake. Happy because Paper Mario, Giga, Beating Cancer, and most of all, no Luigi at the party. Hopefully. I hope so, too. Okay, so quick note. So, Giga actually picked up a, a quick change just now at Merlin's house. So, normally you'd think to get that, you had to listen to Merlin's long story and go through a side quest to get it. But actually, if you just do three ground pounds inside his house, you'll always get it regardless of what you do once you're at this point in the game. And it's going to be convenient, actually, right in this chapter. Yeah, um, unfortunately, Chapter 6 is pretty much glitchless. In any percent, you get to do a really crazy trick, um, but unfortunately, it doesn't really save time in all cards. Um, and in back I have N1, the any percent of record holder, and we have both uh, can attest to that glitch being really, really obnoxious sometimes. Alright, so at this part of the run could be very confusing, especially for people trying to learn this, because what what order you do the mulls in can change, and like what your strats are can change based on what you have. So, thankfully I've memorized like every situation you need to do, but sometimes it mixes them up, so hopefully everything goes right. So, yeah, like, for example, because I leveled up early, I have to do this fight first so I can get the peril, but sometimes you start in peril and you can't do this fight first, so... That can be very confusing. It's rather convenient though, you know. Just literally does nothing, and let them throw the rocks and use them parallel instantly. Yeah, untimed power quicks as you see really fast, and they hit all the enemies, so. And when I'm in at 1 HP, they do just as much damage as power bomb, so. It's, it saves a lot of time. Normally we'd have to just use Star Storm otherwise. Alright, this next fight coming up is going to be a bit slower because he didn't get the FP drop in the sewers. So he had to pick up that uh, stink here since that meant he had to, or since he had to eat the syrup earlier from the lack of FP drop. Yeah, I also have to first strike this small. It's probably the biggest source of RNG at this part of the segment. And that's quick change in action right there. It lets you switch a partner in the middle of a battle without wasting a turn. Saving the frames. <laughs> I, yeah, I confused myself. Last time I did this, I had to do this mall first. So. Alright, luckily that didn't matter much. Yeah, so as you said, the route branches out a bit depending on what small little RNG based things happened earlier in the run. Uh, I like to sometimes like eat items and do things like right when you land because sometimes like the speech bubble doesn't pop up right away, so just to make sure I can talk without jumping. Yeah, there's a fight coming up where he's gonna need full HP and FP for. So you need that wacka any pretty much any time between a fight, but you know this this is one sort of the segment where like chapter six, like one of the things you really I guess can commonly be a problem is you just forget certain aspects of the route and you know, forget to do something like you'll whack a, and you just lose your run because, oh, I've had to do this fight, but I don't have any FP or HP to actually win it. Yeah. This room is called the Room of Death by the Paper Mario community, and because it can be so brutal with the encounters in such a tight space, all right, luckily I was able to avoid them, but I have to come back here, so. Yeah, I have to dodge those guys two more times. All right, you have time for some donations, just some easy jumping and stuff. No problem, we got a $50 donation from Pink Reaper. Glad to see Paper Mario back in AGDQ. It's the game that got me into speedrunning. And Giga's tutorial videos were what taught me everything. So thank you, Giga, for everything. Put my money towards leaving Luigi out of the party. Leave the bro, save the frames. P.S. I will donate an additional $50 if Giga goes for timeout strats on Hallway Bowser. <laughs> uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> Got a $10 donation from We Go Giant 228 Two loading zone skips done in the first try. You rock! Kill cancer and the animals. Got a $10 donation from Chaos Lord. Hey everyone at AGDQ, I'm loving this speed run and the hype from the crowd. I'm also loving the announcer, so this $10 goes to her choice. Keep up the awesome run, and can the crowd give me one big hype? <laughs> Uh, 
Thank you. <laughs> we got a $100 donation from Tuli Canuck. Uh, I love this game more than anything in the world. Paper Mario hype. Also, show some love for Junior Troopa. He's the real MVP. JR the homeboy. Yeah. Some, some of the runners in that community referred to him as JR the homeboy, but we skip him a few times, so. So I guess that's what, maybe, maybe because he lets us skip us, skip, eh, we, he lets us skip him. That's why he's the homeboy. All right, so this fight coming up, we just generally call it the maze fight because, you know, it takes place right in front of the maze. It's a pretty straightforward fight. He just has to kill this Lakitu first. Yeah, although the outcome of this fight changes slightly based on what this Lakitu does. He can summon a spot like he did right there. Um, that changes the HP route slightly, but it doesn't really matter. It's the same speed. Oh, he missed a block on that. Yeah, there's another fight we're going to do in Chapter 7 where the outcome of this fight determines what we do, actually. So, yeah, this is another example where we have to remember someplace earlier on what happened RNG-wise in order to know what the correct thing to do. Yeah, I also, um, you might think, why did I use Shell Shot first? Um, and the reason is because they all die at the same time, otherwise they would have separate death animations. All right. So again, I'm upgrading BP. Now I have a lot more useful badges, so being able to wear them all is pretty nice. All right, you can read some donations. We have a $25 donation from Super Laser Dino. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> One mic. Good job, Giga. Also, can everybody drop some francs in the chat, please? <laughs> uh, he's here with us in spirit. He's, he is also a Paper Mario All Cards runner. We have a $50 donation from Mark G. <laughs> Pace, why are you commenting a run? You should be practicing instead. But I guess you can choose where this money goes to. Love, Mark. Thanks, Ben. Appreciate it. Got a $10 donation from Anonymous. So happy seeing Paper Mario get some speed running love. Would love to try my hand at it someday. Donation goes to Runner's Choice. Beamer donates $20. Luigi's been to enough Mario parties. Here's to letting him relax at home this time. Good luck on the run, guys. $10 donation from Fantastic Mr. Socks. The year of Luigi never ends. Bring him to the party. Uh, Binding of Emily donates $10. This is my first time watching slash donating. I've been loving seeing all these games. So much skill. This is such a fantastic event to help a great cause. Thank you to all uh, for your hard work. Donation goes to Announcer's Choice. Got a $25 donation from That Becky. Uh, Paper Mario was the first speedrun I ever saw on AGDQ, and since then I've always watched the event, so I had to donate during this awesome game. And as I always enjoy parties with my siblings, bring Luigi to the party. We had a $50 donation from Jonathan M. Diaz. First off, can we get some more hype in the room for this fantastic run? <laughs> when, I, when I saw it made the list again, I just had to donate for one of my favorite games, Paper Mario. I've been watching these marathons since 2000, uh, 2013, but never had a chance to donate. Much respect to the Paper Mario community and may the RNG star spirits bless Giga on the remainder of the run. Also, leave Luigi at home. He's been lazing around the whole game anyways. Yes, do that. Got a $10 donation from PK Patriot 56 Had to make a donation for my favorite N64 game. Keep up the good work. Miku239 donates $10. I don't have much money right now, but I wanted to donate because the announcer's voice acting is so cute. Thank you. Thank you for the great event, AGDQ staff. All right, so now we're just about halfway done through Chapter 6. We've got, we went through that long side quest. We didn't really talk about it too much, but we had to get the water stone from that rather vain flower on the left side over there. And now that we have the Water Stone, we're going to get the next item that we need to reach the boss of the chapter. And now our next order of business is to get our final party member, 
our boy, Lackluster. Yeah. He is definitely the most broken partner. Um, and as we said, you can do a really crazy trick called Early Lackluster in Chapter 6 where you can go to him first. But that creates complications if you actually need to beat the boss and get the card, which I need to do in all cards. So that's why we can't do it. Yeah, also Giga needs to be careful. It's it's not it's pretty it's pretty easy to get over these spikes, but he has to be careful not to fall into many times because he wants to have as high health as possible because we have to fight Lackluster and we want to make ourselves in peril during the fight somehow. And if we take damage, that can make things awkward. Alright, so unfortunately, I've, because I'm not doing like Lester early, where you can spawn up there and go to the rest of the area and not use this bubble, um, I have to use this bubble, and the, there's a bee on the other side that can notice you while you're still in the bubble, and if that happens, he can hit me or f he can touch me or first strike me, and there's nothing I can do about it, but thankfully he was yeah, good here. Alright, let's get him out of the way. Alright. Yeah, those bees are pretty aggressive. They will hunt you to the ends of that get you. But yeah, that's probably one of the most, if not the most, notorious RNG-based encounters in the entire game, and thankfully, we had no trouble. I'm not like a top stair. If you go fast enough, you can make the top stair there, right before the cutscene starts. Yeah, just saving some frames and moving up the stairs while we wait for Bombette to do her thing. Alright, time to fight our boy Spike. Yeah, Spike. Alright, so the strategy for this fight is actually really simple. He's just gonna power jump and shell shot for the first three turns. And after that, he should be in peril and power bounce, but he has to block all previous attacks, so serious time. Okay, good. It's not a difficult block, but some people occasionally mess it up and lose yeah. their runs here. It's kind of terrifying. Yeah, someone I knew missed this block yesterday. I wonder who. <laughs> I like to do an extra shell shot right there now, um, so I don't have to rely on RNG. Um, if you want, you can skip a shell shot and go for a five bounce, but then you have to shell shot him anyway, and it's a little bit slower, so I've just selected to shell shot him and go for a three instead. It's guaranteed. Yeah, most of us really ever get worse than a five on this fight, but Giga, for some reason, has horrible luck with him and yeah. gets four caps all the time, so that's why he did that. And he picked the second option there because that's the least amount of text in this yeah. cutscene. So even though we have Lackluster now, um, he's not really useful yet, but he because he will become very useful shortly. Yeah, you can read a few donations. All right, we got a ten dollar donation from Susin. Thanks for subscribing to I Ate Your Pie. You know, during the run when I get super thirsty, there's nothing more delicious, more quenching than a nice bottle of Aquafina water. It's crisp, cool, and bursting with flavor. Unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> Got a $10 donation from Atma Weapon. Donating during Paper Mario as one of my first RPG is great. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Decidious, for your $10 donation. I used to play Paper Mario a lot when I was six years old. It's the best Paper Mario in my opinion. Good luck for the rest of the run, and thanks for speedrunning this masterpiece. Oh, and give Luigi a little bit of love and bring him to the party. Yo, we got the magic pixel. Yeah, there's there's like one pixel here where you could hit the machine and not turn around to talk to the magic Koopa, save some frames. All right, so this is what we refer to as the machine fight. There's several different ways to do it, but the fastest way is to pick up that Thunder Rage we literally just got and switch to bow so we don't have to worry about getting hit by anything. And then on the next turn, we're just going to Star Storm them all. Yeah. 
It's kind of unfortunate that we don't really have a lot of things that can hit multiple enemies in the air, so we have to do like for some slower things like star storms. Yeah, glitch in glitchless, you can actually upgrade Paracarry to Ultra Rank because you don't skip Raphael the Raven, and that lets you have his air raid ability. So a lot of these other fights you can do much quicker just by using Paracarry. It's... Yeah, well, star storm lags a little bit here. Oh, well, maybe it's my mind or something. I think when you break this machine um, on N64, it doesn't lag as much, but I don't know. This place is kind of laggy in general. You have to hit both sides of it to break it fast. So that's the last major thing we need to do now. Yeah. At this point, we can head straight for the boss. Yeah. Read a few donations during these cutscenes. No problem. We got a $25 donation from S. Chiro. As a child, I spent actual weeks beating this game. I would say this was my first RPG, and it holds a special place in my heart. Cancer sucks. Let's beat it like the runners beat these games. Got a $30 donation from Nightshane. Third donation from me, Paper Mario, is one of the games I've got to play together with Edo Bean, and it's had a share of awesome moments. Donating during the Paper Mario run seems fitting for this reason. To GigaDB, looking forward to seeing all the strats the Paper Mario speedrun community have put on. Uh, paper. P.S. <laughs> no. Luigi is coming to the party. Uh, you're so close to having a good comment. So close. That failed. Yeah. <laughs> uh, $20 from Incubus Critter. Donating because the Sun Tower music is amazing. Put my money towards bringing Luigi to the party. Then the party getting cancelled because everyone leaves when he gets there. <laughs> <laughs> Got a $50 donation from Groove Dolph. Love the Paper Mario series and it's great to see such a charming game get run. Put this towards the Tutu sound edit in Diablo and make anime real. <laughs> 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 that one clap. <laughs> Strongly proved. <laughs> yeah, anime! <laughs> if if an anime is watching this, he is the he used to be a famous runner of this game. He'd also strongly prove that, by the way. Just putting that out. Recrea and Dave bought donate ten dollars. Hey AGDQ, the Paper Mario and Thousand Year Door are are my fiance's and I's favorite games of all time. Is anyone on the couch looking forward to Mario & Luigi Paper Jam? There has been a proper sequel since Thousand Year Door, and it looks like it's going to stay that way to us. <laughs> it looks okay. Well, it's more of a Mario Luigi yeah. game. Mart Sinclair donates $20. I've been watching these marathons since last year. This week I'm reminded of all the great games I need to revisit when I have a chance. Paper Mario is an amazing series, and this current announcer is the absolute best. Good luck to everyone involved. Let's all keep working to stop cancer in the best possible way. All right, so we're finally made it to the boss area. So you see that Wacko to get himself the full HP and FP. It's again, it's another simple thing that you could easily forget and lose your run to. Yeah, and you might have noticed as soon as I got up here, I went to the right loading zone, and what that does is reset the cloud cycle so I can go up slightly faster. It saves like one second. And that badge he just picked up, we're going to be using it for most of the boss fights the rest of the game. It's pretty convenient timing, actually, because this boss in particular would be very difficult to kill in all cards yeah. without that badge. But, so that's super jump charge. It's going to increase Mario's attack by RE3 every single time he uses it. And it stacks, as well as with Mega Rush. So he can do absurd amounts of damages, or absurd amounts of damage once he charges it up enough. Yeah. Yeah, so in this fight, you get to see the true power that Mario can get with Super Jump Charge, Mega Rush, and Power Bounce. Minor note, he's using Out of Sight in the second turn here. Uh, he only needs to block one out of two of the attacks and then use Out of Sight on one other one. If he decides to use Out of Sight on the third turn, though, then he will be vulnerable depending on what cap he gets because he needs to be able to finish off Pop on the same turn with his partner. And if he uses Out of Sight, he won't be able to use his partner the next turn. Okay. 
Ooh, uh, I got four. four capped, unfortunately. It's the second worst outcome. If he got a three, of course, you wouldn't be able to win the fight. Yeah, but there's a very small chance of getting a three capped on this fight. Four is just slower. I have to switch to pair carrying the shell shot, but he still dies. So, yeah. Yeah. All cards five is a perfect fight. In any percent no wrong warp, on the other hand, it's even less generous with caps. And this is the only time in the run I will upgrade HP. Um, it's more convenient for the late game bosses. So, unfortunately, well, kind of fortunately, actually, you can't do card LDS on this card. There's no more card LDS. Um, even if, it first of all, require like 20 jumps plus because you're, the loading zone's all the way off to the right. Plus there's stairs, which throw off your rhythm. But even if you were able to somehow do that in a run, um, we still need to watch this, cut, this peach cutscene no matter what, so it doesn't even save time. Which yeah. you'll see why we need to watch it a little bit later. It's a question we get asked quite a bit, actually. All right, this is gonna be. Oh wait, we have to try to meet that pie challenge, don't we? Here, you guys, are the backup of the challenge. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. So, do you guys want to attempt to try to sing it? All right. <laughs> Go for it. I honestly. I have no idea to start it, so someone else start. Yeah! Sure you made Pie proud, guys. <laughs> Whoops, got too excited. <laughs> the only little time saver I was able to do here is I can transform while opening that lock, and that's about it. Yeah, other, also, the only thing he really has to be careful of is not to let go of B during this entire intermission. Yeah. Because if he, the worst thing he can do is base, is reach up to the very top of the stairs before the cutscene ends and accidentally untransform. That's happened to me once. It's yeah. pretty sad. <laughs> and actually, if you're curious, um, there is no faster side there. I can go either way. I just go wherever I feel like going. I can get a few, a few more donations in. No problem. We have a $50 donation from Vash the Joker. Had to donate during one of my favorite games of all time. Cancer has taken some of my family members, so I am 100% for this cause. Thanks for all that you guys are doing, and good luck to all the remaining runners. We got a $10 donation from Completely Garbage. <laughs> I love Paper Mario, but I love Luigi even more. Bring the man to the party. It's not like he's got anything else going for him. Got a $12.90 donation from Endartica. I had to donate while my favorite speedrunner is on the couch. Headstrong1290 can pick where this donation goes. Hoping to see you run this game again. Or keep destroying Jack and Dexter. That's okay, too. Yeah. yeah. Even the Headstrong's a little shy. He's run this game for so long. Like, much longer than I have. I, I was just a paper, paper Mario baby when he, <laughs> when he was running this game, so... Shoutouts to him right in, back, right in the back of me. <laughs> we have a $10 donation from Oopsie Poopsies. Thank you, AGDQ, for making this week so entertaining. Let Luigi party down. Alone. <laughs> at home. And not at the big party. $20 donation from Anonymous. First year donating. I'm so excited to finally watch this Paper Mario run. As in previous years, I've avoided it because I wanted to see the ending myself. 
So yeah, coming up next, we actually have a pretty big glitch. Um, but first, I have to navigate the sewers, which can be a little hard. The spinies can, like, not try to attack you, which can, until, like, you're right next to them, which can actually be really bad, because then you don't have time to react to them. Yeah, the path to where all these spinies are, are sitting is also extremely narrow, so for some of them, he'll actually have to just antis kind of ant react to them really quickly and jump over them. And, as I said, since spawn locations, as well as the direction the enemy faces, is random each time, you will have, it's not really muscle memory, you just have to actually react to it every single time. Yeah, so you might have noticed that I said I don't need the Ultra Hammer anymore, but if you remember, I actually am supposed to use it to get to the Ultra Boots, but that's what we're going to be avoiding. Alright, I need to do this. Alright. Oh, I missed it. So right now he's trying to do a r notoriously difficult trick called Clippy, and what he needs to do is open up the partner menu right when he starts the fight with the Star Koopa here. Right. And it is it is a frame perfect input. And because the enemy, and like a lot of the other frame perfect inputs, it's not from the same position every single time. Yeah. So the, the enemy's moving, so I'm gonna reset the room, so it creates quite a bit of trouble for a lot. Even even the best. Alright, there we go. Have trouble with it sometimes. Alright. Right. Right. Alright, so now after doing that, he's got what's called Clippy Mode. The game more or less thinks that he has gotten off Lackluster twice, and this messes up Mario's hitbox completely. Yes, oh, wow. okay. <laughs> and it lets him do that. Yeah, that strat is really helped me out a lot, and my boy Juicy J can hold up some yeah. juice. <laughs> he's the second place all cards runner, so he's here with us in spirit with our, our juice boxes. <laughs> But yeah, to explain how that trick works a little bit, so now that Mario has this Clippy mode from doing Clippy a bit earlier, he can actually, if he moves into a certain angle, he can wedge himself further and further into the wall. And while Lackluster is sitting on the ground, and you press C down, you'll teleport down to Lackluster's height. And since he was wedged enough deep into the wall, the moment he teleported down, he was far enough into the door frame that he was able to trigger the loading zone. And even though there was a solid block in front of it, if you manage to trigger the loading zone somehow, you will walk through solid objects. Yeah. It's kind of like with Flare Carry in Chapter 5. So I'm going to be heading to Chapter 7, but something seems kind of weird here. Doesn't the beginning of Chapter 7 look a lot like Chapter 5? I don't know. He has uncanny, uncanny resemblance to something. Yeah. Never seen that lava bubble before. <laughs> yeah, this, if you haven't watched Paper Mario Run before, this might not make sense, but in just a minute, it'll, it'll, it's, 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 it's beautiful. <laughs> that's that's all I've got to say. It, it brings tears to my eyes <laughs> just thinking about it. What this does to the game. Or you got time for like one donation? Yeah. Got a fifty dollar donation from Anonymous. Hey everyone, thank you for organizing this amazing event every year. Sadly, I have to miss most of it because of work, but very glad to be able to catch one of my favorite games live, Paper Mario. Keep up the good work for such a great cause and making us gamers proud. All right, so now we are going to start cool stuff. So here we're at this, we're one room away from where Lava Front was, but there's lava down there that he can't, so he can't get down there normally. But with using Lackluster, so this is the first example of what's called a Lackluster clip. So if he wedges, wedges himself into a corner like that and then pops on Lackluster, he can actually bypass the walls. And there's another really good use of Lackluster called yeah. the Lack Teleport. It may seem like I can just walk through there, but there's actually an invisible box that if you walk in, you get trapped in and you soft lock. So you have to go around it by clipping. So See, it does, it does look a lot like the end of Chapter 5, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, coming up very shortly, um, I hope you guys can contain yourself. There's going to be a little bit of a, a lewd scene in this game. I don't know if I know it's rated PG, but like, it's a little lewd in this game. And we got some uh, some hot, very hot chest on chest action. Look at this. Mmm. Hot chest on chest. <laughs> now that was the chapter five escape sequence. So I wonder 
what's what cutscene this is, huh? Hey, we haven't seen this before. What's going yeah. on? Yeah, so <laughs> I guess we can come clean. This is actually the chapter seven Peach cutscene. We actually just beat chapter seven, but um, that is not enough. We need the chapter seven card, remember. But we, it actually is still faster to beat chapter seven like this first, because if you remember, well, well what happens when you beat chapter seven? Where does the game send you? Well, after this cutscene clears, we'll be right outside Crystal Palace, so we basically skip the entire first half of Chapter 7 like this. It's pretty cool. And then any percent, this glitch completely destroys the game, where you use you can use this glitch to beat Chapter 6 instead of having to fight Huff and also Chapter 7, like we're doing right now. And then, like, if, if I was doing any percent, I could just go straight to Chapter 8 now, but I haven't actually touched the Chapter 7 card, so I have to go beat it. Yeah, we call this we call this trick peach war because the, that particular peach cutscene, as Gaius said earlier, it's special. By going into that room, we always trigger the escape sequence no matter what. And instead of playing the chapter five peach cutscene, it plays whatever peach cutscene is next in order. So in this case, we beat chapter six last. So now we play the chapter seven and conveniently warp us out inside the palace. Chapter seven is one of my favorite chapters in the speed run because you get to do a few cool glitches, but it also has some nice movement. And it has awesome music. Alright, so coming up, he's gonna do another trick to skip a Duplo Ghost fight. Spoilers. But, yeah, he's gonna do another trick to skip a Duplo Ghost fight using the same technique he did to do Peach Warp, which was the lack of teleport. So, it's, it, it's gonna look kind of sketchy, but. Yeah, I gotta push it, and it looks kinda funny. Yeah. He has to tap, he has to tap to get him facing the other way. And now, gently. Ah, I missed it. So yeah, so this is a three fra a three frame timing window where he has yeah. to get on him. Lackluster has to be at a certain speed, and if he's fast enough, he'll let Mario clip through the wall. There right, we there go. We so that's mirror clip. So this might look very confusing, but I was actually on the other side of the mirror um, because this this game um, is largely trigger based. The trigger for um, removing Mario's reflection when you're in the background is actually doing the duplicos and stuff. So. Um, and it might look really confusing, um, but right now I'm in the background. You can tell by the camera and the spin animations. Yeah. But those reflections are never going to go away, except for one screen. So it does confuse people. But it looks kind of cool. Yeah, now I'm in, now I'm in the foreground. All right, and we got something really cool in store for you coming yeah. up. So remember, there was a donation incentive about Mario's secret love. But who could it be? Yeah, I wonder. Mario's secret love will reel him or herself shortly yeah. after we do this little mini game. Well, actually, um, you know, this is kind of hard. All the bummets look the same, so let's try to nudge yourself barely in here. Uh, oof. They're not having any of that. Yeah, they just don't want me to go. We'll try again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah this this trick can be kind of precise. I have to do it again, but I, do, I use a different setup for it. Alright, there we go. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's a two-pixel uh, area that you can stand on. You can actually do that. It's kind of weird. All right, they're back again. They're not taking. I guess they really time. just want me to solve this puzzle. I guess I'll have to solve it. So yeah, FYI, the correct bomb bet, or the real bomb bet, is always uh, second from right every single time. The only annoying thing about this mini game is. These Duplo Ghosts have, and Bombat have humongous hitboxes, so sometimes it might not look like you're hitting yeah. them at all. So normally you get a kiss from Bombat here, but we'll get it from his secret love Cooper instead. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so Cooper gets his time in the sunlight this time. Yeah, it's kind of cool how they even have that animation in the game in the yeah. first place for Cooper. He just goes, he just goes, he eyes in his shell and just gives, yeah. like, gives a little switch, yeah. You can do it with some other partners, but some actually crash the game when you try to do it. So um, it's pretty kind of it's kind of funny when you try to get a kiss from Goombario and then the game crashes. <laughs> 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 
Alright, so a bunch of required fights here. This one's pretty simple. He just jumps and then bombs it. Not much to say here. And I believe you got Spiny Spawn, right? I can do. I can actually do the same thing every time. So. Oh yeah, that's right. yeah. It just changes when I level up. Unless I get like more than two fragile fails, but I only got one. Yeah, sometimes depending on whether or not you get Spiny Spawn or not. Spiny Spawn is not. You'd either use Up and Away on this fight or the next one. So you might not have noticed, but I actually did get the star power up, up and away from beating from beating Chapter Seven by using Peach Warp. Ooh, uh, well that's, not that's a big kind deal. of bad. That's not a big deal though. Yeah, it's a Magic Koopa. Yeah, Magic Koopas are kind of wimpy, so they run away when the one's with them. <laughs> if it if it failed on a Clubba though, it'd be really bad because then you'd have to use Up and Away, or not sorry, not Up and Away, uh, Airlift with Paracarry, and that's very very slow. And if you don't mash it all the way, it can fail too. All right, yeah. And unfortunately, um, well, it's kind of a double-edged sword, but I can. I'm gonna be killing these guys with Star Storm, which is slower than Up and Away. But Up and Away is RNG, as you saw. It can fail randomly, so not having to use it on this fight is kind of nice. But it also works out for experience to kill these guys anyway. So. All right. So we did those fights just to clear some statues on the other side of the room. So we're going to go to the other side of the room and pick up another really important badge that we'll use for the final boss. It also looks kind of weird when I pass yeah. through myself in the reflection. Yeah. Alright, this wall you can actually blow up even though there's nothing there. So it's a hidden, it's a hidden room that you might know about if you look carefully on the other side. So yeah, this is the triple dip badge. It lets you use three items at once for an FP cost during a fight. And this will be used in conjunction with all the attacking items that we picked up earlier during the final boss. So some of these enemies in, in these hallways, like they're very narrow, so it might not look like he's able to dodge them consistently, but it actually is consistent. Alright, so... This puzzle is really difficult. I have no idea who the real Cooper is. Like... Yeah, I think Luigi's the real Cooper, but I mean... It's really hard, so I'm just gonna skip it. <laughs> yeah, we're we're good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was really hard. Yeah. If you don't know, that's the same type of trick that he did earlier with the Bombette mini game. But he had an, another setup he could do for it. Alright, one more thing he has to do is he's going to he's actually going out of his way here. He needs to push the statue to be able to access one of the rooms on the other side, but he's also going to go down and get an yet another badge that'll be useful for the final fights in the game, and that's P up D down, which increases your attack by one, and I think decreases your defense by one. It all, it's all pretty important for the final fight, so we don't want to miss it. And again, this hallway looks tight, but it's actually much easier to dodge that guy than it looks. You have time for like one or two donations. We actually got a $100 donation from I Ate Your Pie. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> I, a man of my word. Beautiful <laughs> singing and amazing play by GigaDB. This has been a blast to watch, guys. Thanks so much. Nice. All right, so here, um, it kind of looked like I shouldn't have been able to dodge that guy. It's a kind of a weird strat. I just have to like hold up left or up right, depending on what side of the room coming from, for a certain amount of time, and then I can just barely squeeze past yeah. him. It's a Sh bit tricky, yeah. but shoutouts to old runner Jiminio who found that strat, so we don't have to lure them out of the way. All right, so now that we've got the key, there's only one last thing we need to do before we meet the chapter, and that's this rather interesting puzzle. So he's going to talk to these albino dinos to change the direction that they move in. And the way he's doing this puzzle actually is, I mean, it kind of goes without saying, but this is actually the fastest way it can be done. Some, sometimes we see other runners do it different, differently and we get, we face Pomelo as like, no, this is yeah, the obvious fastest way to do it. Yeah, and this is a, 
Some some people just like to stick with the old way of solving this puzzle, but this way is definitely faster. It saves a few seconds. And also, I'm going to be throwing in a little bonus glitch demonstration here, since I'm right here. You can only really do this at this time. It's pretty convenient. Um, so you can push the statue even after you solve the puzzle. It doesn't unsolve it. So what they didn't really realize is that you can push the statue from the stairs, and it kind of does this. <laughs> and then you can also just jump up here. You don't have to go up the stairs anyway. <laughs> So, yeah. <laughs> Alright, so the boss coming up, Crystal King. He's actually not too difficult of a boss, especially in all cards. The main goal of this fight is we he's going to do this Crystal Bit attack that hits us multiple times, and we need to block two out of four to get ourselves in peril. In other categories, specifically any percent of wrong work, you actually have to block all three. Which can make this fight a little bit tense, but the actual strat, other than that, is the same as pretty much most of the other boss fights until now. It's charged until we get a good enough amount of power to bounce. And he got both blocks, so now he doesn't need to block the next two. And they'll just keep on charging. He has to charge for quite a few number of turns, so his Crystal King has 70, 70 HP. HP, yeah, so it takes quite a bit of damage to kill him. Yeah. He does have really great music, though. Yeah, it's pretty epic. So now I don't have to block these. I'm getting rid of one of them so I can exactly get into peril by not blocking these. He also, he should, he could attack him right now, but he needs to know not to jump the gun because he's yeah. not going to attack. He's a, it's something I've done once actually, is to attack him by accident, you know, thinking, oh, it's time to do it, but no. Get so, away from him to get the crystal bits up here. Now it's safe to attack him. Good. Yeah. And he's done. Right. So that fight's just like with Puff. Uh, you want to get a five cap for a perfect fight. If you get a four, you'll have to use Watt, yeah. Electro Dash again. And if you get a three, well, good luck. <laughs> yeah, alternatively, I could have just um, Electro Dashed on that um, last turn before I bounce. And one of the four right then and there, but it's a slight risk by skipping Watts Electro Dash um, and try to go for a five bounce slightly faster than using Electro Dash. So, unfortunately, you may experience some deja vu coming up. Uh, again, because we had to beat Chapter 7 to get to Chapter 7, now we actually beat Chapter 7, so now we have to watch the cutscene again. So, you guys, so some donations would be great <laughs> during this time. No problem. We have a $500 donation from BobmanGuy334. Had to donate for the first video game I actually beat. I love this game so much, and I've played it so many times. I know what everyone's saying, even though the text is in Japanese. <laughs> Got an anonymous donation of $25. Good luck, Giga. Shoutouts to everyone on the couch, please. Hashtag O to the wayward base. <laughs> it's probably crubby. <laughs> Got a $75 donation from Laura29. I absolutely love Paper Mario. Beat Paper Mario quick so that we can beat cancer quick. Got a $7.70 donation from Crimson Kitty. Donating on behalf of my boyfriend Wesley, who is going crazy over this Paper Mario speedrun. Got a $5 donation from Maud. Wait, if this. Mario is paper, how does all that lava stuff work? <laughs> it's lava paper. <laughs> Got an anonymous $100 donation. Awesome GDQ. Wanted to donate during the Paper Mario run. I'm Glower uh, donates $10. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> He's an any percent speedrunner for this game. The run is looking great, but you should let Luigi come to the party. Don't oh, neglect no. poor old oh, Luigi. Why? <laughs> what did he ever do to you? Shout outs to N1. It's like shot down. That <laughs> I'm sorry, Glover. We have to go fast here. We have a $15 donation from Anonymous. Great job on this run and on the commentary. Shout out to the Paper Mario World Champion. 
For the record, Giga has ran uh, TTYD and SPM as well, so he's yeah, pretty well-rounded. Yeah, I'm well-versed in most of the Paper Mario speedruns. Dom Wevern 5 donates $50. This game is just too much fun. I've never donated before, but this game is just too good not to. Also, shout-outs to the professionals in the back singing for us. <laughs> A few more donations. No problem. Got another anonymous $50 donation. Uh, sorry, couldn't donate more, but I just had to donate during Paper Mario, one of my first and favorite RPGs. Uh, put this money towards taking Luigi to the party, because who wouldn't take best bro? <laughs> uh. <laughs> $20 from Money's on Dio. Uh, loving AGDQ this year, donating 10 times the number of years I've watched. Hopefully, that number will keep growing. Metal Pat donates $10. Paper Mario has some of my favorite glitches slash skips of all the games I've watched, so it's always good to see it at a GDQ. Been watching for four years now after many close friends and family have battled cancer. So good to see how far this event has come and hope to be able to come to do my own run in the future. Got a $10 anonymous donation. Hey, Giga Davey. It's your old pal, Vark. <laughs> so glad to see you and Bass giving us a good show. Keep up the good work. Shoutouts to Big Juice on the couch. <laughs> yeah. Nah. <laughs> in spirit, in spirit. In spirit. Got a $25 donation from Unsecret Crush. Luigi would bring you to the party because he wants you to be happy. Don't you want Luigi to be happy? Eh. <laughs> Captain Cake donates $10. Like so many others, I just have to donate during my favorite N64 game, Paper Mario. This is my first time watching a speedrun of this game, and I'm absolutely loving it. Thank you for everything you guys do. All right, so right now we're heading into Chapter 8. You might have noticed I upgraded the sushi. Um, that also is just for Final Bowser, so you can see how much preparation we're doing just for Final Bowser. Triple Dip, if we didn't mention already, is for Final Bowser also. Now here, similar strat to the bees in chapter 6. I spin away from them, and then I spin past them. Yeah, it's kind of annoying. They have like a little cooldown where they can't see you, if they've already noticed you. Yeah, there's weird death perception issues you can have dodging the enemies there, because you're going up like a spiral area. So sometimes you might not be able to tell where they're standing if you're not careful. All right, shout-outs to everyone's favorite coming up. After these star spirits, give us yeah. good old star beam. Yeah. Wait for it. All right, here we got, we got the true thing that everyone wanted to see. It's the magical space boat. The bathtub. <laughs> the bathtub. So after I enter this, there's going to be a f uh, like one more long cutscene, and then we actually have a lot in Chapter 8, so a few more donations. No problem. We got a $50 donation from Ivy. I need to know why people are getting excited about the LZ stuff more than not the not dead that happened on Chapter 5 with the live stream. That played <laughs> with my emotions. I don't think I'll ever be able to trust a Mario RPG again. <laughs> P.S. Save the animals. Please. The frames are not worth it, and Luigi is worth the world. It's Always the year of Luigi. Got a $25 donation from Jess M.E. Uh, being a filthy casual, I tried Blue House Skip for fun once. Needless to say, I never got it. So seeing Giga get it in three tries and many more difficult tricks is just so impressive. I donate more during this fantastic run, but I still need to buy that sweet Paper Mario tea from the Yeti. Still counts, right? <laughs> yeah, that tea looks really cool, actually. I need to get one. It's only 11 bucks. Got $100 from Sora119. Always wanted to donate this much to GDQ. I've lost all of my grandparents to cancer and just learned my stepfather might have cancer. GDQ's chat has given me the laughs I needed this week. If I could let them pick, I would. But I'll just let the runner pick this one. Also, if this gets red, I'll donate another 50. All right, so now we have the first fight of chapter eight. Um, all we have to do is do an untimed power quake and power bomb finishes them off. 
Um, yeah, Chapter 8 has a few pretty cool glitches, and even though there's one that's really small, it actually saves a lot of time. We're running into that a little bit. Um, where this key spawns is also a little bit random, thankfully that's the left, which is where you want it to be. Okay, so this first room coming up, once he unlocks the castle, it's a pretty narrow pathway he has to go through, and there's two enemies that he has to dodge, and they're pretty ruthless, so... Just like I mentioned with the prologue moves earlier, you need some pretty dedicated strategies, well, strats, to get past them efficiently without getting a hit. It's, a pri it's, it's an area that many new players get encounters at. You'd be surprised. Oh no, I fell for the trap again. I keep falling for traps. Shoot. Yeah. It's like I have to fall for them or something. A dummy. <laughs> Alright, so Giga picked up that life shroom. Uh, sometimes we don't go for that life shroom, but it's mainly needed depending on what sort of RNG you get with the final boss. If you are extremely unlucky, you will actually die to him without that life shroom. So usually on runs where we really want to just finish at any cost necessary, we go for that life shroom. And th this being a marathon run is one such example. I was found like kind of recently that you can, if you hug the walls in a certain way, you can actually go a little bit faster. Because normally lackluster takes a long time to move across the lava. So yeah, you might be asking why I'm not actually completing the basement, and it's because I don't have to. Um, the basement is normally really long, you have to go all the way around. But coming up right here, we could do a really easy glitch. Well, some I might fail it, so maybe it won't be that easy. Alright, we got it. Um, this this is this seems really minor that you're just like going back to where you start, but this actually saves like several minutes because the basement is really long. So all you have to do is just parry across, and you're back here. Yeah, it's the main use of the ultra boots. Actually, you can clip through blocks like that. You we actually recently discovered that you can clip through any block in the game with the ultra boots. But it just so happens that item blocks like that one in particular are at an angle, so it's much easier to get to do it. And even more coincidentally, we can just use pair carry to get across there and skip the whole basement. Yeah, thankfully, normally you don't come in through that entrance again, but the game was like, oh, you're back here, so you can just go through, I guess. So, important place to safety save here, because the next trick he's going to do, he can soft lock if he messes it up. Yeah, and the next trick, um, or the next series of tricks, I suppose, is probably one of my favorite parts of the run, and it's also, like, the best part of Chapter 8, so I'm sure you guys will love it. There's a lot of parts to it, though, so I guess yeah. we can explain each of them. So, the first thing that he is going to do is he's going to raise the water, like normal, Yeah. but afterwards, is he going to swim? Well. Just watch. Yeah. Be amazed. Yeah, it's a it's a little known fact, but you know, Mario is actually Jesus. He can walk on water. <laughs> yeah. So that's an example of the lack of clip I mentioned earlier, right before he did Peach Warp. Gets into a corner and then hops in lack of stir, and he can get past balls yeah. like that. The way this works is kind of weird. I have to like clip in a certain way that the game kind of freaks out and thinks I'm on the water when I'm not. So now I can fall down here, fall out of bounds like this, spin over here, go and out of bounds again, spawn right back up here, go in the corner, tap right three times, Cooper super jump, which is a really cool trick, up to the key, and now I have the key. Yeah, you had to switch to Cooper right before he did that fall, because that kind of stores your momentum, and you don't want to jump either. You just wait until you get in the right spot, and then hit C down to use Cooper's ability, and that makes Mario jump really high, and just lets him able to, barely able to get that key. It's pretty nice. Alright, and now we have the last trick in the run, but it's not very easy, so hopefully I can get it pretty well. I have to do this very specific lineup Yeah, this here. lineup is pixel perfect. Uh... All right. Good. All right. All right. Good. Good cannonless. Yeah, that this this trick is called cannonless, and it's totally not stolen from any trick in any other game. Yeah, he had to maneuver. Also, in addition, getting that pixel perfect clip, he had to maneuver himself out of, while he was falling out of bounds in a certain way in order to respawn right in between the wall there. Because if he didn't, he could have either 
gone too far and respawned and had to do it again, or he could have spawned in front of the wall and he would have failed the trick and he would have lost a ton of time. Also, that dry bones that was chucking bones at me, sometimes he can just get you and there's nothing you can do about it. So Giga's luring this guy out right now. You don't actually have to do it. You could just go straight to that block and push it, but he's just going to be like spamming hammers at you like crazy. And very high chance he'll just hit you. And that's really... If getting into encounter in Chapter 8 is extremely bad, just for reference, because your run meter starts out really low. So yeah. I do mash bad. pretty fast, so I should be able to escape um, if necessary. But hopefully I don't have to. All right, so coming up is a simple yeah. quiz mini game. He just has, he literally has to say one, one, two, one, one. That's that's the order for all five questions. Yeah. It never changes. Yeah. So. I don't actually have to memorize Japanese for this. Some people think that. And it's kind of kind of funny how I have to go do all these crazy glitches and now I just have to sit here through this quiz. So I guess we can have a few more donations while we, this plays out. No problem. We got a $5 donation from no one in particular. Ha, uh, <laughs> quote, eh. Oh, Giga DV 2016. <laughs> awesome job on this run, man. Had to donate one last time before the finale. Got a fifty dollar donation from Anonymous. Glad I can donate towards this amazing cause while watching one of my favorite games ever. We also got another fifty dollar donation from Anonymous. Save the animals, kill the cows. A $20.16 donation from It's Texter. So stoked for the Crystal Keen fight. I'm sure for Giga DB, it's child's play, but when I was playing as a child, it was the most intimidating boss for me. We got a $100 donation from Mr. Magnificent. I was worried to watch in case I got spoiled. Never played myself. But seems like a lot of fun and can't be spoiled when it's all in Japanese. Good luck with the rest of the run. And what kind of party would it be without Luigi? A good one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> got a $20 donation from Sammy K. Paper Mario was one of the first games that I watched when I first got into speedrunning. And it's always such a cool run to watch, no matter what category. I haven't been able to keep up with the speedruns lately due to life, but thanks to AGDQ, I'm able to see everything I've missed. And I also donate to a great cause. Good luck with the rest of the run. And oh, leave Luigi behind. That's slacker. Yeah. <laughs> Got a $20 donation from Baguetta. I love AGDQ and everyone involved. Thanks for what you all do. Also, no player twos allowed in the party. Sorry, Luigi. Got a $75 donation from Anonymous, one of my favorite games of all time, and one of my favorite speed runs. All right, so this room right here, this is probably the last really kind of difficult room to avoid encounters. So this hammer bro, depending where he spawns, can be tricky to avoid him, but luckily he hugged, he hugged the top wall, so all he had to do was spin straight past him. You can also use Bombette to hit that switch, but it's faster to use Cooper. This animation is quicker. He has to dodge the hammer roll one more time. Right. Also he went right into the top, yeah. that's good. If he goes to the middle, it's a lot harder to avoid him. And it does happen sometimes. Alright, so this room is the quote unquote endless. Uh, I, don't, I don't really know what to call it, but this <laughs> repeating staircase room, I guess. But the order is, the order is literally on the wall there, so. It's, re it's really easy to remember. It's also always the same, yeah. if you didn't mention that. So he just has to go through this room, and then there's one more room with enemies in it that are pretty easy to avoid, and after that, no more encounters that he has to worry about. Alright, let's go. Alright, and now no more encounters he has to worry about. Alright. Oh my god! Oh my god, it's Peach! So... Mission accomplished. Mission accomplished, we just leave... What? What? What's that? <laughs> Suspicious. It's gotta hit it, right? That's how you solve problems. There you go.
All right, so he's going to use up and away in this fight just like he did with the clubs in Chapter 7. And just like with that, as well as with the fight charge in Chapter 1, there is a chance that it can't fail in 1. And if it does fail in 1, it's very rough. All Luckily, right. it didn't. Yes, okay, good. Would have had to use airlift on 1 if it didn't. Yeah. So, as, as we like to call this part of the run, um, after you do all the tricks and you get to the final bosses, it's the RNG gauntlet. Um, the RNG, like... It's not that awful, but you can like lose or gain 20 seconds like on pretty much every fight, so it, it can go pretty poorly sometimes. Oh, finally JR yeah. makes his special appearance. Yeah, I didn't want to fight those guys anyway. I don't know. I think I saw him once or something. Same basic strategy, just going to charge here. And he has two defense, so using a lot is obviously the best strategy here to damage. He has to actually block both attacks here, by the way. If he misses a block, he's dead. But it's really easy to block. Now, you might be confused why he's using out of sight. We actually It's because we need an extra turn to charge. And we also want him to hit us one more time. So, one more charge. All right, now we need a five cap. All right, right we go. got the five. All right. Yeah. So. yeah. If I got a four, I'd have to use Star Storm, which is really slow. And if I got a three, I'd actually die, which is possible, but it's very rare. Don't you just love those like 5% chances that can just kill your runs? It's pretty great. And again, nice thing about using out of sight second turn. If he didn't do it on second turn, he wouldn't have been had a, he wouldn't have had an opportunity to use his partners. In case he got a party cap. So I want to retain my peril here for Holy Bowser. Do an equip. Alright, so a lot of these are the badges he picked up earlier thrown. The fire shield badge. So I'll explain each of them, I guess. The fire so the fire shield badge reduces the amount of damage he takes from fire attacks by one. And that's important because Bowser has three different attacks. Uh, we call them the Claw, the Somp, and the Fire Breath. And the Fire does two more damage than Claw and Stomp do on both Bowser fights. Yeah. But by having Fire Shield and later as well the Water Block, which also adds one defense to fire attacks, will always take the same amount of damage no matter what attack he does. So that's a lot of luck taken out of the fight. Yeah. Um, and this fight, he won't really get to hurt us, but um, this fight's actually kind of a joke in comparison to Final Bowser, but um, some interesting things can happen here. Again, it's RNG with bounces, so my fight can go quicker or longer, depending. Four. Okay. That's okay. That's like average. Yeah. Three is bad. You don't want threes. Although threes are much more common on this fight, it's actually like plausible to get one. Yeah, they made three caps more common on this fight and especially the fight coming up. Three caps are on the final Bowser, which is what we refer to as the fight after this one. This is this is one called the Holly Bowser fight. The final Bowser fight, three caps are probably the most common cap you can get. So I got double four, which is pretty average, but I get to show off something cool now. You can actually kill him through the star shield, doesn't actually make him invincible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's it's against one of those things many people don't know about. Yeah. And if you use if you use Watt, it won't work. So it's, yeah. it's kind of one of those weird things. It doesn't really make sense. Yeah, mo it makes most attacks look like they do zero damage, but it's, it doesn't actually make you invincible. And most, and they also assume most players would just try to get it away anyway. So unfortunately, though, when he does in the next fight, he will be invincible. So we yeah. can't get away with that. All right, so this fight, he's also going to equip Triple Dip, and that's going to let us do a lot of damage with all the items we picked up. And that's very important because during, once we start the fight, when we can actually, you know, hurt him for real, we won't be in peril, so we want a way to efficiently deal damage to him before we get back into peril. Because he has a lot of, he has a lot of HP. So we want to be able to kill him as fast as we can. Yeah. There's not a lot of room for error in this fight at all. And also, this this particular part of the game saves so much time in 64. It's crazy. Not this specific part, but the after right before the act, the final phase of the boss is a cutscene, and 
N64 actually saves like 30 seconds just in that cutscene because of how much the Wii VC lags in that cutscene. It's ridiculous. Yeah, like during the. So during ATZ's run in HGDQ 2014, it's one of the first Paper Mario runs I've ever seen, by the way, he actually mentioned just how laggy this cutscene was in VC, and I did own the VC version at the time, but I never really realized just how laggy it was until I saw the cutscene. So if anyone who's watching this run has never seen a run done in VC, definitely check that out. And you'd, you'll notice a really stark difference. Yeah. It's amazing. All I need for a standard fight here, I will be bouncing him three times throughout all the phases. I need at least one floor to make it a bit quicker. We'll see how that goes. All right, good. All right. All right so now I don't have. To, I shouldn't have to use the life shroom unless I mess up. Yeah, he got that life shroom in the case of the, the worst case scenario, which is where he gets three caps on all the turns he power bounces, which it's really rare. Well, not really rare, but it's it's pretty rare. But it can happen. <laughs> Alright, our homeboy Twink is All right, make so, this yeah, Coming up next is probably the, the hardest fight in the whole run. It's the uh, Twink versus Cammy fight. Um, you, you'll just see how hard it is coming up. Yay, Twink. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Twink, you can do it. Alright, so you see, you gotta press A a lot. And then he attacks. Oof. Uh, I didn't I didn't do any damage. That's why this fight's really hard. Alright, mash A again. Yeah, I'd say this this fight in particular kills nearly all of runs that get here. It's pretty it's pretty ridiculous. We got swing, come on. Pull it together. I'm trying! <laughs> Let's get some hype in the chat for Twink. Cheer yeah, mind. Twink. <laughs> okay, we're getting somewhere. Come on. You can do it, I believe. Right, you can have time for one more donation before the end. No problem. We have a hundred dollar donation from Anonymous. Have to donate to a great Paper Mario run. Love the series. Let's leave Luigi out of the party, shall we? <laughs> Alright, so Twink is finally at full power now. This is, that was complete RNG that we got to, to full power. I don't even know how I got it. Yeah. Peach was just doing nothing that whole fight, being yeah. useless as usual. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I did it. Woo! That's, that was really hard. All right. So while we marvel in how not laggy this cutscene coming up is, yeah. this one important point to mention: the actual final boss fight. There are two turns where he will have to block the attacks, and the yeah. attacks can be pretty tricky, so this is probably the last super serious time of the run. If, yeah. if he misses a single block here, it's over. And we have kind of a curse going on with Paper Mario runs at GDQs where we've had to reset on Bowser, so hopefully we can break that curse. Uh, you just had to mention it. <laughs> Sorry. But I believe your consistency. All right. Quick note, this song is slightly different in the Japanese version before I actually have to focus. It's better in the Japanese version. I don't know why they changed it on the English version. I like the English version better, personally. Really? Oh. Yeah. Well, doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Alright, good. Good start. Alright. So he has to be careful with these menus too. Not only does he have to get both blocks, he also needs to make sure he avoids using the life shroom. And he has to avoid using the repel gel as well this turn. If you use an item at the wrong time, your run's over.
All right, right did it. All right. All right, the hard part of the fight's over now. Yeah. All right, just don't use the life shield. <laughs> you're good. <laughs> yeah. Don't be like a certain someone here. Yeah. All right, so anyway, the basis of this fight is he wants to get himself below 5 HP after he deals a certain amount of damage, and that's because at that point, Bowser will almost always heal himself at least once when that happens. So that's why getting those blocks is so vital, because if he were to die and use that life stream, he'll be at 10 HP, but that'll trigger Bowser to almost, with almost 100% certainty, just heal on you, and if he heals, you're, you're, you're just screwed. There's nothing yeah, I only need a three there, I just want to see how many I can get. <laughs> No right. beamless. No beamless. Actually, it's kind of funny. Um, we're, uh, beamless is supposed to be really rare, but I get it a lot, so I kind of get teased for it. It's called, it's called the Giga Bowser to get uh, beamless. Yeah, he's sniped like, well, I actually got it, like, in all my practice runs, I probably got, like, half the time, so I guess it holds true. So I don't know what the actual chances of it happening are. It's just slow. It doesn't really mean anything. But yeah, this fight's pretty much over. And if you don't know what we're talking about, beamless is referred, or what we mean by beamless is sometimes on that turn, he won't actually use the star shield to make himself invincible. He'll just do some sort of attack. Right. And that saves us that turn where we had to use out of sight. And yeah. <laughs> but oh well. All right. Well, I, I broke the curse. I'm really happy yeah. about that. All right. Yeah. All right, cut off on the Luigi bid war. All right, unfortunately, we gotta bring Luigi. Uh, uh, it, eight seconds. it it was a lot too. <laughs> it was leave Luigi was three thousand five hundred and forty-seven, but bring Luigi was five thousand one hundred and seven. Wow. <laughs> well, we tried. <laughs> Some people really like Luigi, I guess. <laughs> We're clearly not biased. <laughs> clearly. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe next time. Maybe next time. Yep. All right, if there are any more donations, we got a few of them before Luigi gets his time, I guess. All right, we got a $25 donation from the Sound Defense, donating for an awesome and wonderfully entertaining Paper Mario run. Great skills and great commentary by GigaDB. One of my favorite games destroyed. $5 from Peter M193. It still blows my mind how many tricks there are in Paper Mario. Probably my last donation for this evening. Every bit helps, so let's get cancer out of our lives. Donation towards a goal is runner's choice. Got a $30, uh, $30 donation from Clear Drago. Making one last donation before the end. Putting half to saving the animals and the other half goes towards, well, I would have donated sooner, but I couldn't find an option to make GigaDB fight the anti-guy trio, sadly. <laughs> Instead, it'll have to go towards letting Luigi come to the party. Can't let that sociopath from Mario hog all the glory. Little plug, um, I actually have a run where I do that fight called All Bosses, if you want to check it out. Um, on my channel, I have the, the world record in that category, even though I'm the only one who runs it, so... <laughs> I'm gonna test the real records the best. <laughs> yeah, check it out. Check out that run at, at twitch.tv slash I at your pie. Um, he's, uh, I mean, I'm very good at this game, but uh, he's even better. So, yeah, stream very big. Got a ten dollar donation from Todu. I'm so sorry I can't donate more, but I just had a pitch in on this amazing event. Much love from Norway, and may all of you have a great time. P.S. You've got a fan in me, announcer. That twink impression was just adorable. <laughs> got a $50 donation from Anonymous. Forget Luigi, bring Twink to the party. <laughs> Thanks for the amazing run. Nimpeg donates $5. Paper Mario is life. Finally donated for the first time during my favorite video game. Got a $20 donation from Coquet. Uh, the Paper Mario series is some of my favorite RPGs. So underrated. Cheers to everyone working hard behind the scenes, and extra cheers to the badass announcer. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I got a $20 donation from Met Leon. I don't always bring Luigi to the party, but when I do, it's much more fun. He's got a parade to lead, guys. <laughs> 
Got a $50 donation from Sora119, as promised. Here's my donation for reading my $100 donation. From the bottom of my heart, thank you to all the runners, donators, and everyone behind the scenes running every GDQ beautifully. Got a $100 donation from Anonymous. You are awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Got a $10 donation from Weeby Gamers. Longtime watcher, first time donating. Had to donate during one of my favorite games on N64. I lost my mother, grandmother to cancer three years, and hopefully nobody will have to worry about losing anyone else to this horrible sickness. Also, take Luigi to the dance. Got a $60 donation for uh, Moso. Thank you for this awesome event. Save the barbs, kill the cows, and let the old man rot. <laughs> Cow Rock do uh, donates $50. Second time ever watching AGDQ and first time donating for a great cause. Keep up the great runs. $25 from Kian M. Hey, AGDQ, love the run. I'm swapping between this and the glass blowing. Never seen the run, but loving it. Luigi always wins doing nothing, so let him stay home and do nothing. Good luck. You guys are the best. All right, one more. And then Luigi. No problem. $50 from Anonymous. Love watching AGDQ. Such a great time of the year and cost. Also had to donate to my favorite series of all time. Put this towards greeting the loner ghost hunter to the party. <laughs> All right, so we didn't really mention this, but you can, there's a Luigi skip. Normally he always comes to the party, but all you have to do is just hold down when you go in the pipe and Luigi doesn't get to come. But unfortunately, I will not be doing that because you guys love him so much, so he's gonna come, get to come to the party. And just so you know, you're, you, all of you are guilty of killing 240 frames, so. <laughs> all right, here we go. No down. I'm so sad. <laughs> Rip frames. So now it's the walk of shame with <laughs> Luigi. <laughs> with Luigi. Oh my god. So yeah, he gets to pop out of here and go to the party. If you press down, he doesn't. You don't get to see him. All right, now just a little bit of movement to the castle, and then when Peach raises the roof or raises her hands, uh, the, the run's over. Yeah, see, I get ready to call time. Yeah. So, Roughly about like 45 to a minute from here, so. Or maybe a little bit less, whatever. <laughs> maybe like 30. Whatever. All right, after she prays. And time, no, time. <laughs> <laughs> Close enough. I forgot. Close enough. <laughs> All right. Three oh four sixteen. Three oh four sixteen. That's pretty. That's pretty decent. I definitely am happy with that. Some some things were kind of bad, but. All right. So yeah, that's Paper Mario. I hope you guys enjoyed. <laughs> DB for your awesome Paper Mario run. After this, we'll be Graviton with Blast Corpse. And now we're going to go ahead and go to somethingartistic.net. Got a $200 donation from Anonymous. It bums me out hearing so many selfless donors apologizing what they can't do more. I'm making this donation in honor of all the fans and viewers who wish they could make a donation or wish they had the means to give more. We're all in this together. We're going to go ahead and showcase a uh, glitch uh, for Paper Mario, which will also be done by GigaDB.
Is my mic on? Yeah, yeah we're up. We're okay. Alright, so just I'll show off like a little thing you can do in this game. It, it's pretty crazy, but the first it's a lot of steps, a lot to explain, but uh, I'll try to rush this a little bit because I know you, everyone wants to get to the next run. So first, you just jump on the spring. Normally, you're supposed to hit another spring to get to that one. I kind of messed with the cutscene values. Hopefully, I get this. Uh, okay. Um, if you fail that, you cannot move and you soft luck. So I'll try. I'll try to get it once. <laughs> uh, You have to. I have to hit the save block from underneath. It's pretty tricky. Yeah. All right. I was gonna. I was intending on showing off a few things. It was five minutes, but um, as, based on how this is going, I might only have to get to show one thing you can do with it. All right. There we, there we go. go. All right. So now I can move with the save block text up because of cutscene values being manipulated by that spring. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and save. Um, but I still have a storage effect going, so I can do this. Keep the text up. And things don't really work properly, so I can just jump on the spring and nothing happens. But, uh, actually, something did happen. Uh, the spring was stored. So now I can grab this pulley that I didn't actually grab. Um, and now I can try to hit that spring again. Alright. I didn't move. So now I can jump on this. Alright. I'm gonna go in this corner, and uh, I can open up this. And base, would you like to press A? And see what pleasure. happens. Pleasure. <laughs> and uh. yeah. <laughs> All right. So yeah, that's save block storage. Uh, the game is kind of dead. <laughs> yeah. We have time for baby purpose, maybe. Do you have time for? It was five minutes. Do I have time for one more thing? Yes. Okay. Okay. Shows baby partners? I yeah. Do? Okay. So I actually, as you can see, it does actually save your exact positioning when you do this. Ah. Uh. <laughs> yeah, this trick is kind of brutal. Sometimes you get it a lot, sometimes you don't. There we go. All right. Um, okay. So the first step is I open my partner menu, then I pull out a bow while scrolling the save text, so I don't select anything like that. Now I use bow, press no, open the menu, um, and now I can switch partners. And something weird will happen if I try to use them while they're switching. Should I, should I do it with Bombay? You think? Yeah, that's a good one. It's pretty awesome. So I kind of froze her in place while I'm doing that. And now if I open the menu again, she's back, but she's a little smaller. <laughs> <laughs> so now we have a little cute bomb bed. <laughs> so you can do a lot of crazy things with this glitch, but um, I think that's all I have time to show today. So, yeah. All right, so now that was Paper Mario. <laughs> uh. Alright, I'm going to read just a few um, donations before I head this over um, to our friend Toggle Switch. We've got a $50 donation from Anonymous for the announcer's twink impression. Put a smile on my face. We got a $25 donation from Koinu93. Uh, I meant to donate during the Sonic block but ended up oversleeping. So I figured Paper Mario is another great time since it's a good game and great run so far. Ever since I became a speedrunner six months ago, these events have been even bigger blast. This is my second year being able to donate, and it holds a more personal meaning this year. I lost my aunt to a battle with uh, pancreatic cancer just last month. Hopefully this money and everything raised will help prevent more losses to such a terrible...